It was a train of the American side Coming back from some mill in Wisconsin Big freighter's call, it was better than most With a crew and good captain, well seasoned The dawn came late and the breakfast had to wait The waves broke all of the railing Every man knew as the captain is held Which of November comes to the Whoa, what's up? What's happening, everybody? I, I'm I'm not even ready for this show. My goodness, nobody's here. I'm just reading my newest Bassmaster magazine. Nice. Not too exciting. We're waiting for Eric. He's running a little late. He may not even show up. I'm going to hold down the fort. We have an action packed. Have no idea what we're going to talk about night ahead of us. It's going to be a short night only because I am dead beat tired, you guys. This is getting crazy. <laughs> Sounds wearing down on you, huh? Wearing down, man. Got to go guide again tomorrow with a bunch of strangers. Absolutely. What's the bite like up there now? Good, man. You know, Good. if they can make casts, we can catch them. Okay. Got to make the cast. Are they on the beds up there yet, or are they down with uh, that? You know, it's getting to the point where there's uh, quite a few. Not, yes, yes and no. I think there's a lot of fish that have not committed yet. Yeah. Mm. What's going on, everybody? John Nee, Jamie, Chip, Kuda, Andre, Scott, Alex. Oh, that's you. Walt, what's up, Walt? Bill May, Terry Clowers, Clowers, M. Jones, saw someone else, Ray, Sean, Bass RX, the usual suspects, the usual peeps, Darius, hanging out, dot, tot, tot, dod. Vince, who's new here? Who's a regular? Who hasn't missed a show? Sean. Uh, he's missed a couple, little prick. Listen, oh, <laughs> Carl, Jimmy Big Time's in the house as well. He just texts me. He says he's backstage, but I have no idea how to bring him on. Be cool to talk to him real quick. We're gonna have an open Kevin. We're gonna have an open, uh, open topic. Just kind of hang out tonight. Get into anything you want to talk about. I already saw alien abductions mentioned. That would be cool. Or we could talk fishing, of course. Absolutely. What do you got go. going on, Alex? Nothing too crazy. It's finals week for me in school, so I'm busy with that. Mm. I had a tournament yesterday. Did okay. We missed the money. What's but okay? What's okay? I don't know the exact place because they just read off the top nine, but I was a, there was 45 boats, and I was a pound and a half or so out of the money, so... I just I had three of the right ones and two dinks that I just couldn't get rid of. Was, oh, could have been better, could have been worse, but came in with a limit, which I always like checking that off the box and making sure I do that. But just I didn't get that you. big bite I needed. Man, would have changed the day for sure. Speaking okay. of dinks, let's bring on <laughs> the dink master himself, Jimmy Big Time. Where are you at in this world, man? You cheeks, you look like a chipmunk. What are, what are you doing? And his and his microphone's not You're on. muted. Man, this guy, you would think he'd be prepared. He's never prepared. There we go. Oh, hey, hey buddy. Sock it. Yes, guys, you can share this to Facebook. Just hit the share button. Yo, what's up, everybody? How we all doing out there? And man, look at this. Great start. What's up, Anthony? Look look at you, man. What's up? You gotta get a haircut, dude. Dude, I'm growing it out, bro. Looks good. Yeah. Thank you. It. Thank you, Alex. Looks you look older. 
Well, you can suck it. <laughs> <laughs> See how old it really is. I'm sorry. Oh man. What? The, hey, listen. What are you guys, uh, Alex? How you been? Pretty good. And my camera angle good. good. We got, oh, it's perfect. Yeah, man. looking good. I got a I got a light now, a round light with my. Oh yeah, man. I'm good, Jack. Wow, been fancy. Give me big. What's this? Johnny Mango, Johnny Love Debates. My man, good for you, buddy. You're, you're welcome, bud. Hey, uh, the package just arrived. Kuda! Um, yeah, so what are you guys up to? I'm just uh, hey, working. Hey, listen, Scott, working, brought working, up working. A good, Scott brought up a good point. He wants to talk about the nationwide chicken shortage and how it's going to affect Chick-fil-A. I didn't even know if there was a chicken yeah. shortage. Well, I didn't know that I, either. Is it? I mean, you're no, in the industry. I, there's well, no, not here. Okay. Not on the East Coast, um, we're still uh, chicken in a way. You know, <laughs> there might be you a know? bass. There might be a bass shortage down in uh, gunpowder. I heard. Mm. You hear no about that? A little virus going on down there. There is really that. that that's common down there. It happened before. A <laughs> couple, like three, four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't um, know. No chicken shortage, Vince, I guess. Canada, will you ship to Canada? Um, Vince, I, uh, inbox me later on. And we'll figure something out, I guess, buddy. Let me take this dip out. There's more chicken than people. There's a lot of chickens, man. They're, they're, they make a lot of chickens. What's up, big day, Steve Hardy? Hmm. I got your package today, but I didn't open it yet because I've been so busy. But I'll take a look at it in the morning. So you get packages, huh? Well, I'm guess, pretty important. A guest on Smallmouth yeah. Crush gets packages, and I get. Uh, I'm pretty uh, important, Alex, these days. I actually got a package myself just today, but I'll unveil the contents of it next week. Uh -huh. I didn't have time to put it all together today. Should be a big hit. I actually got a pretty nice package, Alex. Not what'd you get? <laughs> I'm scared to ask. Travis. <laughs> did I ever tell you about the time Travis and me did a show about a Zara spook? Mm, that's a classic. Oh, I had not heard that. That was a good one. And I, and I just said something to you and it went right over your head, dog. Well, I caught it, but I figured it's from, only man? 808, but we didn't need to get into that till at least after nine. Where you, He's where up you in from, Indiana. Alex? Indiana. Indiana. Corn land. Yeah, Indiana. Wow. That's a big racing area, bud. Really? Sprint cars, man. Midgets, big time in Indiana. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Jimmy. That's a gross habit. You're right, Jamie. It is, James. Travis, not, whoa, nine inches. Jesus, good Lord up in heaven. Listen, so <laughs> you wouldn't believe who stopped by today. At your house? Yes. Who? Jack Tommy. Rankers. Jack Rankers. What what he want? <laughs> you want he wanted to learn how to tie a knot. Oh, the old slip knot? Yeah, wanted to know some good baits and uh the right drop shot rod, so we hooked him up. There you go. Mm -hmm. Good. Brad, you I won't be at the called me a couple weeks ago. It's funny. Yeah, sure. yeah. Brad, I'm not gonna be at the Chester County tournament. I think we'll be down at the Northern Opens. Yeah, I got the big Northern Opens. Jimmy, I'll be down by where you work in Virginia. Yeah, I'm on the coast. You're you're going to be on the James. You're inland. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um I I uh or eat big big. What the heck is going on here? Yeah, Dad, <laughs> I'm just reading. Jimmy, yeah, I am a football fan. Yep. Ta tackle craft. How the blood clots. Man, I wake up with cramps still nightly would you get your shot no you weirdo oh. Get oh. Your shot. <laughs> i'm gonna look at the comments you guys go ahead take the show over I, uh, i've been having muscle spasms dude some I, I i'm seeing somebody in june to figure out what's going on why june could they just not get you in quicker that's as soon as they could get me in man probably be <laughs> dead by then but i'm just gonna i'm gonna try to drink more water i guess i used to think you know they say it's a vitamin D deficiency. Yeah. Wrong. I'm in the sun all the time. All right. I'm reading your comments. B, they say it could be uh, 
dehydration, yeah. which, you know, I normally drink quite a bit of water. I'm a gallon a day guy for, yeah. for a while, but in the last, I'd say two months, I've three, four five cups if I'm lucky. So, um, maybe that's it. We'll look into that. Bananas. Hmm. I can't, I can't eat bananas, Sean. I get enough potassium. I, I take some really good, powerful supplements. So I don't think it has anything to do with, uh, with my How nutrient like deficiencies. You like, what do you like better, bananas or hot dogs? Probably a hot dog. Mm -hmm. I don't know where you're going with this. I really like that. I can see your question, dude. The Johnsonville Cheddarwurst brats are amazing. Dude. I can see your question. You ever eat those? Why you got to go weird on me? I remember going to Country USA and we'd grow out, and that's that was the uh, that's what we survived the seven days of Country Fest in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. What's that? Just a big country concert big or something? Party. Yeah, you camp nine days. Oh, yeah. Just craziness, dude. I never bought the campsite pass. I always bought the overflow parking. Okay. And I would just For what? crash wherever. For what? Just Country USA. What's that? Just a uh, country festival in Wisconsin. You like country music? Who doesn't? Why wouldn't you? I like old country music. Yeah. I'm with Jimmy. Seriously, like, like, I love Johnny yeah. Cash, dude. I love Johnny Cash. Oh, the old stuff? That's like, real Yeah, old. the older stuff. I like like Travis Tritt and uh, the Chattahoochee <laughs> guys. You don't know. Way down yonder in the Chattahoochee. Alan, Alan Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. Right? Right, Alan? Mm -hmm. I like that old school shit. Seriously. Run DMC. <laughs> You know, Beastie Boys. Who don't like the Beastie Boys? I that's don't. Before, that's before your time, Travis. <sighs> Alex, how old are you? You look young, dude. 22. Oh, God bless Getting you. old. You're, you're a kiddo, man. You're a little guy, man. Little dude. <laughs> little dude. You guys like Alabama? The group? On highway. Roll yeah, dude. Roll. Alabama rocks, man. Yeah. And I love the state. Yeah. Have you if you could choose ACDC, Troy, my man, I love him. Jimmy. Jimmy, if you could live in another state, would you? Where, first of all, would you? And where would it be? If you could just be like magically, here's all the money you ever need. You don't have to worry about working. You just live. What state would you choose or Probably area? Georgia, Alabama border, Southern Georgia. For real? Yeah. Yeah. So Southern Georgia is Florida, and then right. so you're kind of all over the place. I'm right here. in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it West yeah. Point? What's the big lake that you foul is the, on the border, right? Uh, West Point's on the, uh, I believe, Ale I guess West of Which one's uh, Seminole? Atlanta. Seminole's on both, splits both, I think. Ah. I would like, yeah. My, I have family in, uh, Al in uh, Georgia. They tried to get us to move down there for years. I couldn't talk my wife into it. Mm-hmm. For years, they they're from Conyers, yeah, which is I, thirty miles outside of Atlanta. I could I could I could definitely dig a uh, Georgia as well, or the the you know that North Carolina, that North Carolina, Tennessee, yeah. uh, North Georgia, like where where Austin Neary lives. Is it nice? Probably one of the coolest country like settings. <laughs> Besides, you know, there's specific, you know, oh west. I mean, I don't know if you ever driven. We've taken family trips to like I, Yellowstone, Idaho, the Badlands, South no, Dakota. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. No, I'm, I'm just saying it's a cool area to to yeah. see. I do but, want to go to Alaska, though. I want to make one, at least one trip to Alaska, at least one. Hmm. You know. See, I've <laughs> never, I've never had the urge to head to Alaska. No, you don't want to catch. I no, love it. You been there, Alex? Yeah, we took a family trip up there when I was younger and I mean it's just it's off the beaten path I mean there's not really cell signal there's not gas it's really really different than any other place I'd ever been I feel like Travis will like it just because there's there's no people there's not a lot of rules you just kind of do your own thing and nobody bothers you mm -hmm. um, well I lived in Maine which is real close to Alaska it's like the state over <laughs> yeah. and um, did you live in pretty, Maine? Dude, I, I lived in Maine for about eight months. I was working there, and, um, dude, I caught some big-ass smallies in Maine, boy, on Sebago. Mm -hmm. right? Little, little Sebago, big Sebago, yeah. Big smallies. 
Hmm. Put them ones you catch to shame, boy. Anybody living in North Georgia right now on the chat? Yeah, okay. Okay, Bassmaster says he grew up at West Point. Fishing West nice. Point. Any state in the South. That's what Jason said. Yeah. yeah. Alex, how about Come you? Like, you Indiana boy Chicago, for bro. life? It's too cold, Sean. <laughs> um, cold Chicago, man. No, Travis. I haven't really oh, completely Cody, made yeah. up my mind, but I know I definitely don't want to deal with the winter. I've considered getting two small houses in two different places, kind of like maybe one up in like Michigan or Indiana and then one down in Florida because I can't stand the cold when it gets to the negative temperatures for months. It just sucks. So you live near Polonek? Isn't that where he's from? That's, That's Idaho. Idaho. That's, isn't that next to Indiana? Oh, yeah, man, it's Jimmy. It's the same thing. Listen, yeah. Indiana actually has, uh, believe it or not, there's a lot of relic hunting that goes on in Indiana for what I'm learning. Oh, yeah. Eighth grade was hard three years of my life, and I definitely feel social buddy. <laughs> I'm telling you. I might quit fishing and get a metal detector and go look for Indian stuff. I actually want to start gold mining. That too. Yeah. Hmm. Dude, I've been I, digging that stuff, man. There's I so many cool the videos on YouTube. Well, I'm rigging watching. up. I'm watching that stuff now, which That's is good. I'm away from the conspiracy stuff. Yeah. And, um, I'm letting That's go. That's all I watch are gold shows, man. Life still, below zero. You still know. Still aware. Don't watch that stuff, man. You got to like watch. <laughs> Dude, I, watch I saw this video. Show. So they're what they're finding these bullets from the Civil War era. Get a map. Uh, that's crazy. It is, dude. I'm into that. Jamie, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not. Geography. <laughs> yeah, I'm out, man. <laughs> I don't know uh, shit about the country. You don't. I know you're from Minnesota. I know that much. Oh shit. <laughs> Travis, have you looked into mining like crypto or stuff like that? Don't get it started, Alex. <laughs> no. Jesus. That's a thing. Ten years ago, he I understand. eBay. Uh, what, what else are you doing? Remember that one thing? Uh, he was, uh, uh, what were you doing? Some shit. I forget. You tell me. Remember we were all looking for the way out? We were all trying to get rich. Remember? <laughs> I remember. We were looking for the get rich quick as soon as, man, we were fucking brainstorming, dude, weren't we? Mm-hmm. We ended up going back to work. <laughs> Cream juice didn't make it. So I guess we you had to go back to something else, I guess, huh? We tried, man. We did try. We tried. We yeah, should have had a reality work. show. Network marketing, mm. <laughs> vitamins, mineral supplements. I almost jumped in that profound lure company. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that guy still even in business? I think they are. Isn't that Jimmy Snorton? What's his name? Horton? <laughs> yes. He's snorting something. Oh, man. Man, dear. Oh, magnet you fishing. Like my sweatshirt, man. Yeah, by the way, I did pick up a big ass magnet. I got one here. So I was thinking on some of these guide trips, I should just dangle a magnet over the side of the boat. And do there you ever you see catch stuff with magnets? Yeah, dude. I've watched they, a bunch of YouTubes. Yeah. Sure. Heck yeah. I my thing is I don't like I don't like to go in waters I'm not familiar with or know the history of. So some of these guys are like diving. You know, there's a magnet hunter, I think, in the in Europe somewhere that's in one of them river systems that runs through one of the major cities. And it's just like, man, that's pretty sketchy with the history of that water, man. I don't want to be digging around down there. Um, I, I don't even like like I like to swim in the clear, clean, hopefully nobody freaking, you know, no casualties. You know what I mean? Like I like a nice, pristine yeah, I like to swim. Don't get me wrong. But you ain't going to find me jumping around in northeast Chesapeake Bay anytime soon. <laughs> Especially the fact, Jim, did you know that there was manatees found as far north as the Susquehanna Flats? Yeah, mermaids too. <laughs> For real, I seen them, dude. Matter of fact, because that low tide this year, I'm surprised there wasn't a couple of them washed up on the flat. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Were you What's out wrong with the manatees? Fish? Alex, you ever fished the Chesapeake? Nothing. I haven't, no. Oh, you're missing out, bro. 
Every fish has 13 hooks in it, in his face. That's the way it is around here. Yeah. <laughs> On the Chesapeake? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that. Go into a marina. I'll tell you what. It's all about slowing down this time of year, man, and picking things apart. That's the that's the that's the theme. By the way, Jimmy, I'm leaving in like three days. I don't want to bag from baits, but well, come up and get them. Oh, geez, that's I heavy. made them just for you. I made the uh, floaters too, dude. I was expecting, you know. You want me to bring them to you? Just put them in the mailbox. Now, this day and age, I don't have to yeah, leave my house. Cool. Not only do the baits cost me money, they got to ship them for eight ninety five. Fuck you ever do for me? I'll be fine. <laughs> Here we go. I'll use my worms. Travis, come get them. Oh, you know what? When are you leaving? Uh, I was try to roll out Thursday night. Oh, okay. Because I got to leave for Delaware tomorrow, and um, I won't be home till Thursday. You're gonna leave. So if I put them in the mail tomorrow, will you get them? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Do you have a machine and stuff at your house where you can do all that? No, I take it right up to the post office. It's two seconds away. Okay, Jimmy, I I'm going to share something that um, uh, Z Bates shared with me last year that changed my life. Okay? You you go on eBay. Basically, anyone that goes to the post office more than three or four times a month, this is huge. <clears throat> you go uh, – uh, just go to Amazon, order one of them little scales. They're, they're 15 bucks. okay? Yes. Okay. The website's called Pirate Ship. I seen that. Set up an account. They're actually they're, they they ship so much through that that they actually have deals with the post office where you'll it'll actually be less expensive for you to do it from home. And you just, you know, obviously you have to buy packaging things like that, but I have a I use a lot of my old Amazon things that come in the house and just reship it. Yeah, me yeah too. so yeah. get yourself a bunch of those bags and then a tape measure, you know, eight by 10, you put the guy's address in, you, you put the weight in and then, then here's the bonus. Then you go to the post office and you just create an account with them. They'll pick the package right up from your door, dude. Hey, well, really? It's so simple. Remember those stupid auctions I used to do here? We're that was stupid. No, but listen, I'd have I'd have a hundred. You were fun until you ruined it. I'd have a hundred and fifty boxes, dude. All your fans love that auction, too. and we're gonna have one soon. A hundred and fifty yes. boxes that I had to go down to the post office and piss everyone off in line behind me. Yeah, I know, right? You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. M. Jones said he has a great. I saw kid. that. There's a couple things I want to show you guys real quick. So just excuse me for one minute here. Jimmy can use his weird, his weed scale. <laughs> Alex, you smoke weed? I do not. Okay, but I know yeah. these fans will not pass up some good drug joke comments. I'll tell you that. It's their favorite. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he, yeah I can remember that auctioneer. Problem is when we did the auction, mm -hmm. Travis just really ruined it. You know, he, I'm gonna kick his ass next time the, he does one. The nice thing talking? is he doesn't have his headset on now, so we could say whatever we want. You won't right hear. Now, it. We're talking shit. Oh, <laughs> hey, hey, welcome back. Sorry. Hey. I heard something. Can you hear me good or no? Yeah, you're fine, Jimmy. Why? Why you always say that? You're fine. <laughs> so listen, guys, I'm trying to get into glide baits and. Ooh. I'm getting more serious about it. And so here's my system. I went, of course, these big bass <laughs> mafia bags. Well, I just got to say, J Jamie, <laughs> Jamie, listen, real quick. Jamie Newton said uh, that I'm used to weighing things on scales and having somebody pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> listen, that, what, are you, what are you getting at, Alex? I'm showing you my, I'm showing you my glide bait boxes. So I went on Amazon and what found these containers price? to keep them in. And then I that put them in these cool. bass mafia bags. And so, you know, awesome. I bought a bunch of these Depths 250s that I'll never throw, but they look cool in here. Um, I think it's a really cool way to to carry your your glides. But I TK just sent me some baits that he painted for me. 
and I got to share with you guys the awesome paint job. And we kind of had it, um, I guess, a quick uh, just out of the blue live last, what was it, Friday or Saturday night? Um, I don't even know what the hell went on. You weren't there, Alex. I don't even think Eric was on, but there was a bunch of you guys on and we talked about it. But is that not the sickest perch color you've ever seen? Jimmy, you got to look at this. That is pretty nice. That is nice. How real does that look, dude? Yeah. I need it. I mean, that's just craziness. So I'm hoping I can actually catch a fish on one of these glide baits. I actually tied the big one on. It's actually in the boat ready to go. Um, All right. Yeah, I'm going to try chucking it around here and there. So but speaking want... of TK, he says that this is just a preview of the baits that are going to be the next auction. So how committed are you to <laughs> throwing these glide baits? Are you going to throw it for five casts and pick up a Ned rig? Or... No, I won't sell these. These will be with me for a long time. Nice. Yeah. Look at that shad color, dude. That shad paint job. That's, that TK? Yeah. You can't. You, if you could actually, you can see, it, it looks like a real... Like it, it changes color based on the the direction of the light, and I mean it's pretty. Well, there's a yeah. that's actually a powder that they put on there, Travis. It does that. It's something. It's <laughs> it's uh, I'm, what's the name of it, Alex? I'm trying to think because you can put it. I don't know. From well, the guy that painted it's on, so he'll tell us. Oh wait, is that is that the guy from Florida? TK, no, T T K Alabama. Oh oh, ask him. Yeah, he'll Jack know what I'm Brad. talking about. Yeah, look at that shit, dude. They use it Damn. for cars. It's, they use it for cars, like car paint and shit. Cars. Yeah. Ask them. TK will tell you. Ain't no secret. Speaking of glide base, Travis, you see what BTC's been catching out there? Yeah, I hear the stories. He goes out to a lake, ties on a big <laughs> glide bait, it off. fishes for 10 hours, and then gets to post one pick of a four and a half pounder. <laughs> really? Color shift. That's it. Cuda, thank you, Cuda. It's called color shift. Hmm. My man, Cuda. That dude, Mr. Murphy, is the <laughs> smartest dude I know. For those who don't know Cuda, he's a good dude, man. Yeah, he is. He was. He's on the show about a month ago. I was on cool the guy. show also, Alex. You're on I the show all him. the time. No, I'm not. Travis don't want me on. The fans want you on. I know that. I love these people. These people are the best people in the world, man. They are. I they agree. They really are. He ought to start giving, doing more giveaways, Alex. Might not be a bad idea. We'll have to work out some Facebook like and share type giveaway or something Travis, like that. I'll do a giveaway. I know. I so money. I'm broke, but I'll do a giveaway for your, for I, your fans. I will. I'm going to get. After I get caught up. Yeah, same here, dude. So this summer, I've realized. So I, I just want to give you guys a little breakdown here of our future live shows. Mondays, next week, Monday, we'll be live from the James River. Hopefully, our house has good internet connection. So you're going to hear from myself, Gary Adkins, JP, and Tom Nee, and we'll be checking in. We'll be about three days into practice and let you know how things are going. Uh, so that'll be a fun little show. And then the following week, I'll probably be up on the St. Lawrence River with Jimmy Houston and Roland Martin. So I'm going to try to get those guys on the show um, on the 17th. And then, of course, the 24th, we have Dem Jigs. And then May 31st will be the, uh, the May Patreon. And we have a lot of support from that Patreon. I see guys uh, signing up. Uh, quite a bit, so I get notifications when you guys do sign up. I appreciate the followers of that, and it's uh, it's kind of taken its mind of its own. We got a real good group of people, and we've been mm -hmm. hopefully pumping out some good yeah, information. Man. Jimmy, focus here, buddy. I'm sorry, these comments are better than the show, dude. <laughs> so jo Jordan's on. Jordan, yes, we are. I guess we are guiding tomorrow. Might as well, buddy. I got you on the schedule here. I thought I sent out an email, and now I'm all worried. I'm going to send that to you right now as we're doing this show because you should have got the address and all that stuff. Carry on, guys, while I figure this out. <laughs> um, Alex, yes. do, you like the, do you like the longer look? I think it looks good on you, yeah. I think you should consider them. Oh, the beard is nice, yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, it looks good, man. It's coming in. 
I'm going hippie, dude. Seriously. Travis, you got any plans to wear the visor this summer? You know, I might. I, I do. I I, I want to get back into the visor for sure. I have a bunch of cool ones. I just you used to have. I remember you used to have that Chad Pippen hair. Remember you and Chad were like. <laughs> and I still do, Jimmy. It's just so much more work now. You know, I used to care about how I looked. Um, where are we? May <laughs> flavor, flavor. Is tomorrow May fourth? Yeah. Uh, yes. All right. I'm just gonna put May fourth. By the way, don't forget it is Mother's Day weekend coming up. Send. send. It is. Yes. Would do you get your mother anything, Travis? Um, yes, I will. What a headache. I have to think, <laughs> I to think about it. You guys see how many questions we can ask Travis while he tries to send this email. You want to? I start asking some questions. It'll be over. Jordan, <laughs> hold on. Hold on, Jordan. If I Jordan didn't send who? the email, jo I got a trip with Jordan tomorrow. If I didn't Jordan send who? What's his last name? Meredith. Meredith. Oh. If I didn't send you the email, how do you have the ramp address? Thanks, Johnny. And how'd you know 6 a.m., Jordan? You're... I Come don't on. know why your mother's a glide <laughs> Hey, I think I got a trip with the, uh, another. Uh, Kuda, I used to have frosted tips, bro. Fan of the show coming up. I here. used to have hair down to here. Bon Jovi freak looking dude. <laughs> I did, Alex. I was a you had a picture guy. of it? I, dude, I, I, I try to find one, bro. I can't. Damn. We didn't have cell phones back then, dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you didn't yeah. have a Polaroid, you didn't catch a shot, you know? <laughs> They're the ones when you take it, it, it comes right out. You ever yes. see them? I, I have seen one of those in my day. The house. Oh, a polarized <laughs> picture? Yeah. 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 Alex, I got grandkids your age, dude. <laughs> you have 18 of them. No, I don't have 18 grandkids. You guys are rabbits over there. <laughs> There's nothing better than family, bro. No matter what. That's man. right. All right, Jordan. That makes sense. Yes, we are on. I will be there in the morning for sure. Ready to go. I had all the crumb crunchers over yesterday. We had a little party too. Of my grandkids. Fucking Travis, do you want to give everywhere. Jordan like a little preview of what might happen tomorrow? Or do you not want to give away what no, I can't everyone that's going either. on? No, 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 no. <laughs> So I know you said you had another plenty of grass on the flat, big flat and back channel flat. We need fish and grass. Plenty of marinas, A, B, C, and D. Dot. We need fish and marinas. Travis, what is the odds that you jump over like a little dam, like Gerald Spore did in the MLF tournament? Is that something that might be in the game plan tomorrow? No. To get back to those fish? No, no. Uh uh. I wanted to try that. I don't know how. Safe or smart, How's it is, but it looks fun, doing, bro. Huh? This year, did you go in the reservoir this year? Kind of wingo. No, the reservoir, man, down south, gunpowder, the quarry. Yeah, um, I actually took a bunch of uh, some regulars. These guys, uh, they're fun. They're fun guys. I, I, I had them a couple years on the Chesapeake. They went with me up on Thousand Islands, um, last summer, and we wrecked them, and so. The day they had a trip with me, it was going to blow like 20 plus, 30 plus miles an hour. And I said, listen, guys, you know my style. If it, I'd rather go where I think the fish are going to bite than deal with this these conditions. So I was able to talk them into going down there. Yeah, put in, you put in gunpowder? Yeah, it started off decent. We caught some fish, and I thought it was going to be a really good day. But some of the areas we hit – that are prime normally right now just wasn't happening and it was really confusing. And so a couple days later, I find out there's some major virus going on and these bass have a lot of sores on them and whatnot. And I think there's some issues down there. That's why mm -hmm. it's kind of sad, man, because I do enjoy that part of the river. Could be lamprey. No, it's, there's something going on. Well, you know, there's, there's a lot of garbage. Remember the middle river died. <laughs> Remember that? Couple mm -hmm. years ago, <clears throat> mm -hmm. like the Middle River was like wiped out. Dundee should be good. All those areas should be good. Yeah. Do you think that virus was something similar to what you saw up on the fish on Ontario, no. or is it something no, it's different? A different the, those okay. viruses on Ontario, those that was a different form. You know what, Alex? Sure. There's a lot of. 
I mean, a lot of there's a lot of shit that gets dumped into Chesapeake, dude. Really? Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've cracked down on it big time, but there's a lot of shit, you know, that there's so much, you know, I mean, it could be dumped in Baltimore and the tide brings it in. You know what I mean, Travis? I mean, it, you know, I mean, it can, you know, it goes all, I mean, how far is, how big is Chesapeake? It's like, it's huge. Sure is. I mean, we're only, and it seems isolated. Shit. You know, there's always little sections that have some problems. Yeah. Well, there's a there, lot of creeks. There's a lot of runoffs and shit. I'm sorry. You know, they come into those creeks, you know? There's so much that needs to be explored there on the Chesapeake, too. I wish I had more time. <laughs> Sean said it sounds like herpes. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, dude. How many, you like, come down this way, dude. Yeah, Waves yeah. Current and Ice brings up a good point here. He just ordered from the Real Shot. They do ship fast. He ordered a line counter reel. What are you, a walleye angler now, Waves? You giving up on bass? Um got in quebec within three days that's crazy we should probably nice. we should probably take a second here and do the the uh the real shot tackle tip of the week you sure feel thing. me jimmy you feel me yeah let's do it let's do it what Well, we've been slacking here with the smallmouth, uh, with with the real shot tackle tip of the week. I think we skipped it for the past two weeks, but mm. we always talk about a bait that they have available for you to purchase. In the course, if you use smallmouth crush fifteen on anything from the real shot, you're going to get fifteen percent off your first order, which is pretty cool. And this week's tackle tip, we're talking about the Berkeley Gulp. You know what? If you watch any of the Smallmouth Crush podcasts and the future ones, you're going to hear a lot about gulp, and it is a special bait. Everyone's on the max scent deal right now, right? But this yeah. gulp still catches plenty of big smallmouth, and you can actually find it in some stores. You can the find Emerald Shiner and the Leech. Scent. Yes. This is my favorite smallmouth bait, Emerald Shiner and the Leech. I agree. I agree. I like smelt. The smelt color, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. I like the I like the Emerald Shiner to be honest the best. But if you go in the description of this video, you'll you'll send the, you'll get a link right to these uh olive green pumpkin. I think they make like a lighter green as well. A great colors if you're thinking about targeting smallmouth with a drop shot. This leech is always Oh, is that within, a leech? Yes, always within a, arms leech. Is that a 3 or five? Length. This five, is a 3. Right? Now they make a 5. No, the they 3 do. inch. Huh. Jimmy, the three inch is really sneaky. It's stupid looking because there's not a lot of action. I've seen it in an aquarium. Yeah. It's it's just a subtle fall, but there's something about gulp that drives fish crazy. And of course, it's a leech, right? I yeah. I keep going back. I I don't. I never have seen. I mean, I cannot think in recent memory when I've actually seen that some leeches just chilling in the water swimming. I've seen them on fish. Yeah, where do they chill, man? Do you? Does anyone ever see leeches just swimming around in a leech field? Yeah, but like uh, no, in real yeah. life, no, I've you don't. Anyways, th there's leeches out there, okay. But uh, this definitely listen when you're out on the Great Lakes and you're in clear water, exactly. you're on the Finger Lakes, you're on the St. Lawrence River. I don't think there's a lot of leeches chilling in that heavy current and stuff like that. But this does work. I think it has a lot to do with the gulp scent. But there is something to be said about this three inch. There's been a lot of tournaments that have been won on this exact bait. So you head on over to the real shot, you get 15% off. And, and Waves makes a good point, guys. If you run from spot to spot and don't take your gulp off, it'll be this big by the time you get to the next spot. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Do you have any is there a workaround for that? Or is it just no. you got to deal with it? Yeah, make, just make sure you take no, it off. It's okay for the day. You know, but if you leave it on, like, if you leave it on your rod for a couple hours, dude, and you ain't using it, it's going to shrinkage, dude, big time. It's like yeah. jumping in a cold pool. Mm -hmm. I try to put, I, I, I actually get the, the gulp liquid and have a separate container, and I'll soak pretty much all my baits for the next day right in that liquid 
You're overnight if, if I have a tournament. Yeah. yeah. Cause I really, there's something to be said about that ingredient. Well, I got to take the tank it. sauce. It's all you need, bro. Well, I, I make it myself. Uh, it's called the secret tank sauce. Triple S. That shit works, dude. Jimmy, did you know that Berkeley does not have a patent on any of their scent? They just believe because, that no one's going to put in the time to research what actually goes into it. So anyone that figures out what goes into it could put that out on the market with no issue. The only way to do is you melt the plastics down and have somebody split, you know, split it apart. You know. Yeah. Yes. I Who's mean, you guy? know what? I think there's three things when it comes to a bait, and this is this is and Travis, we talked about this with that flatworm. Because okay. I was going to get a flatworm mold, I'm still going to get a drop shot mold, but the the uh, the the texture of the bait, the color of the bait, and the smell of the bait. When I mean texture, I mean how soft it is. Like mm -hmm. you know, like is it a soft, subtle? You know, when the fish grabs it, you know, or is it a hard creature? Like I don't make any of my bait. Agile baits designed a tube and i i used it he forced me to use it he's like well if you're gonna throw a tube you better throw this one i said fine give me your damn tube that you're so proud of okay i have tubes i've used with confidence and i know what works but i'll throw your stupid tube and i threw it and i'll tell you what man we caught him good on it and there's some big ones and he started talking about how you know he looked at the texture of tubes that are on the market and blah, blah, blah. And, and you know what? It made sense. And it really did catch some good fish. So, and it's a super soft tube. Super I soft. I love soft baits. But they can't, you know. Hi, Dave Brown. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. So texture is huge, soft. dude. It really is. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so hard to get... You know, Senkos are so good when they're really, really soft, you know? But the problem is when you put salt in them, because I put salt in mine, when you put salt in them, it, it tightens up the plastic. It hardens it up. And, I mean, if you pour it out of a soft, like a fin – I, I use the, the – a, like the regular – like a, a, a normal worm, uh, Travis – but I would love to use the soft, but you, you can't because mm -hmm. it would tear. You know, they would tear apart. Yeah. The O ring would cut right through them. You know what I mean? Like seriously, yeah. I'm fishing O ring. Yeah. But they they should be soft. I agree. I agree. And Jason's right. They can't be too soft. I mean, yeah. drop shot drop shot baits can be soft, right, Travis? I mean, they can. I mean, you're gonna go through a lot, but yeah. we've, we've had this discussion plenty of times in the past you know or would you rather go through a bunch of baits that catch fish and you know i mean i would pay, pay the price to get bites i guess it's uh in this day and age there's so much pressure it seems like every year it gets worse and worse and all these different bodies of water that we fish that you're gonna have to start thinking outside the box and maybe you know i mean listen jimmy there's there's no doubt the french fry works there's no doubt a brush hog a baby brush hog is the deal you know but there's a lot of other baits out there. I, and we talked last week about that. The reaction elevations, that pig, whatever, bear pig, man, mm -hmm. pig, man, bear pig, man, that thing's been, uh, I've been really, really impressed with that bait too. Jimmy, put your phone down, man. Come on. I'm saying hi to your people, dude. So Travis, what do you think sets that bear, man, bear pig apart from like a brush hog? Cause I mean, you would think it, if it's a just... little wider, it's a little okay. wider. It, I think it's a little more flex. It's not as, uh, well, even the brush hog after a few bites, you'll tear that, um, that reaction elevations. Definitely. You're not fishing that thing all day. You're going to yeah. go through a pack or two if you're on them. Yeah. So beavers are that way, Travis, you know, the beavers. Oh, rip. sure. Yeah. They rip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, that goes back to what Travis you know what was I just started saying. Doing was, I don't know, is that like when I'm pouring these swim baits, the swim bait I have is a little four, it's 3.75. It's identical to Z-Man's without the rudder. You know how they got that top fin on it? Well, take the top fin out and the mold that I got is that is that mold. But what I do is I add a little bit of a tube creature to the mold, Travis, you know, to mm -hmm. the plastic saw. So it tightens it up a little bit. 
So you want it soft for the action, but you want the bait to be, you know, so you can put a hook in it and it ain't going to tear it, you know, after one fish, you know? Mm -hmm. But I've been experimenting with things. I mean, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a, these, some of these bait companies got it figured out, you know? <laughs> Travis, what to prison? Sell baits. Yeah. What do you think prevents like a Z man or someone with that, you know, that three times whatever strong technology of making like a brush hog or a bigger line of baits? Do you think it's harder to work with that kind of plastic to implement things like that? Well, no, they make a brush hog imitator as well. Oh, really? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, they, they do. They have that, um, the, you know, they have a, they have a beaver style bait. They have all that stuff. Yeah, it's they just, do. They have a lot of baits. Uh, it's just a little, takes a little more time to really get that bait set up correctly on your hook for okay. a proper presentation. It just takes a little extra time and some getting used to it, mm -hmm. but you can get it dialed in. Sure. Not with every jig or whatever on the market, you know, beast, beast coast. We, we finally got our new smallmouth crush jigs in the magic bug, whatever you want to call it. I don't think we even have a name for it yet. MB Mothman, I see written on here. Um, <laughs> You know, we messed up. the 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 keeper does not work well; doesn't play well with Z Man. So we're taking, right we're going back. We're going to try to work. We got to work it out because Z Man's a big part of my life, you know, yeah. and, and the baits that they make. So, uh, I got back here from the St. Lawrence, and by the way, which parts of it is open? I don't want to hear any hate mail. You're fishing on clothes. Oh, <laughs> uh, I get all the time. <laughs> Um, I spent a good hour, man, trying to work a Z man on these different ones. And yeah. I just, I didn't feel comfortable because it took me long enough and too many wasted attempts that the general public won't be able to thread one on too easily. And so we made the right call. We maybe postponed a while, you know, we'll be talking sure. in June, maybe, uh, when this jig comes out, but it'll work with other plastics. Well, so I'm yeah. gonna be tossing it around. Sure, uh, but the real one won't be ready yet. So, is your ideal keeper for a Z-Man kind of like what's on the Ned box, just that little lead on the hook? Well, I really like what's on the power finesse shrooms and the uh, just that little barb that comes out of the shank. Okay, you know that the Ned locks is fine too for those smaller ones. You know, it, it, yeah. The Nedlock's hold seems to hold a little better versus the uh, power finesse rooms, just that little bar that comes out. Mm -hmm. Because one thing that's important about Z-Man, at least in my mind, is it always has to be rigged straight. And after some fish catches and some, uh, you know, casting that bait around cover, it's going to turn a little bit and you'll see yourself adjusting that bait every two or three or four casts. And once that happens, it's time to just put a new one on in my mind sure. or, or, you know, switch it, have the hook come out the other way and you might get a few more casts with it, but you really, you really need to have that bait on there straight. I can't stress the importance of that. Like I, I'm, so, I'm always on my clients. When I see that, I'm like, I right, let me adjust your worm. Let me adjust your worm. Let me, you know, I, you got to pay attention to that. So what are the pitfalls of not having it rigged straight? Is it going to fall differently? Is it not going to have the same action? Yeah, I don't think it has the same action. You'll probably still catch fish. I'm just saying sure. I want everything proper. And it's all for, yeah. my, for my own sanity, maybe over <laughs> the fishes. Right. <laughs> Jim, when we're fishing together, man, I invited you up to Will's the you other know, day. Dude, I, you know what? Be honest with you, bro. I have been super busy. I'm not lying to you. You know, the grass season's kicking in, dude. I got my regular job, and then I try to come home and make baits and get caught up on orders, and it's just been crazy for me, man. I'm fishing the BFL, though. Cool. I'll be nice. Ready. Yeah. I'm going to try to fish the, the four, you know what I mean? That's what I'm, you know, if anything. But I, I, we'll have to figure something out. I don't want to, I want to go smallmouth fishing with you. I don't want to catch no largemouth. You know? Sure thing. When's that BFL, Jimmy? 20, was it 18th or 20th? What is it, Travis? 
May, uh, May yeah. 19th or something? Yes. Two weekends. Two, Yeah, two weeks from yesterday or it's Saturday. So who gets these jigs? I, we got to send them back to the factory. He doesn't get to keep them, unfortunately. What are you going to yeah. do with them? Hey, Rick. We're going to send them back, man. And do what? Redo it. Oh, I like that little jig you got there. That's a nice little jig. I'm sure a big is. jig guy. I love finesse jigs. I mean, I make all my own too. You know, I don't. You know, I just like them. Sure. This See, is a I little different. Got the heads right here. Boss. Yeah, these are great heads, dude. For making your own baits, these boss heads are great. Mm -hmm. They got great hooks. I don't trust myself to make With baits what? properly. A jig? Yeah. Takes like three seconds. I always use the finesse hair, the finesse silicone. I don't use that thick, nasty shit. Mm -hmm. It's got to be finesse, and it's only about fifteen strands, real thin. I don't like big, bulky, stranded jigs. At well, they have all. a time and place, but yes, I agree. No, it's got to be a finesse jig. Okay, okay. What would you say is a time and place, Travis? For the bigger jig, like yeah, football head. Yeah, I was gonna say a football head. I really like okay. a lot of. A lot of skirt on that. Even sure a flipping thing. jig from time or a time or two. But listen, I'm not the guy to talk about flipping jigs. You know, I really am not the expert when it comes to that. I have a bunch of them. I, I try to force myself to use them, but I find myself throwing a, a, a Texas rig plastic where, where a lot of guys are going to throw a jig. I'm the opposite in those punch jigs, man. I, that confuses the hell out of me. Now nah, I'm out. Um, you know what I mean? I'm out on that shit. Hey, listen, uh, just here's a, a good question from a guy. A guy says, Jimmy, what bait do you recommend for Carolina rig? Not me in general, but he asked if me personally, because he, you know, he, he's because he, I'm cool. Yeah. But, yeah. but I personally like to throw on a Carolina rig a centipede or a brush hog. Sure. I I'll agree with the brush hog. I'm also a big seven or ten inch worm on a sea rig. You know what's funny you say that I have a wonderful seven inch mega shake now. It is an amazing worm, Travis. Mm. You will like it. Okay. <laughs> and you will get some eventually. Uh-huh. Alex, you too. Alex, send me your address, dude. Yeah, sure thing. Right. Thanks, man. Yep. Travis, what's the biggest soft plastic you've caught a small mouth on? Making baits out of silicone instead of biggest plastic. soft plastic. Oh, no, Brandon. Like a 10 inch worm, 12 inch oh, worm, something like that. Well, I mean, I've caught smallies on the seven inch Senko, which ain't no. Yeah, that's a pretty big bait. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know it's seven inches, but it's also a very fat. It's like a hot dog. Seriously. It is. <laughs> yeah. I've definitely caught smallies on that bad boy and good ones too. In areas I was targeting largemouth, of course, but uh, yeah. specifically on Champlain. We're not going to talk about can't talk about that big bait on Champlain. Speaking of Champlain, oh, I that love interview it. with JJ Judd was really, really good. Yeah, how was he, that? I liked it. What? what listen, I listen, JJ. Yeah. So I was fishing the Costa. I was at a hotel, and dude pulls up on the, in this nice fancy Skeeter. And I'm like, who's this guy? You know what I mean? Like I'm in my little back corner spot. Don't be coming around by me, dude. I'm just kidding. But so I saw him and then I was like, we just, I don't know. We said, hi, he comes over. We start talking. And I don't know what we were talking about, but he, I, th I must have asked him his name, believe it or not. I was interested, yeah. right? That's unusual. What's your name, buddy? JJ. And then it hit me. This is fucking JJ Judd we're talking to. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like he's well known in that okay. area on Lake Champlain um, for years. He's just. He's he's always going to be up there in the standings, regardless of the event. Mm -hmm. I think he, he he's also he's either right there or he's bombing. And, and what I mean by okay. that is, when you get to that level, shit's going to happen in these tournaments. You know what I mean? Yeah. He what doesn't level? bomb often. He doesn't bomb often. But I think he's the type of guy that that will take those chances. And he'll try to get the job done. He's not fishing for thirtieth yeah. ever. You know, what fishing I mean? to win. Mm -hmm. He's fishing to win, and that's why he's so consistent. And it was cool meeting him because I, you hear, you know, 
Yeah. If you do any type of research before an event, whether it be just to look at weights or anything you can find on the internet, man, JJ's name always popped up. And so and it's a unique name. So it always stuck in my head. I'm like, who is this guy? And there he was. Cool dude. And when I came up with the idea of doing the podcast, um, and I wanted to really reach out to some of these local guys that dominate Champlain. He really doesn't fish anywhere else but Champlain. Can't wow. blame him. He's eight yeah. minutes from the boat ramp. He shoots turkeys and he and he catches big bass. You know, living so, the <laughs> right. So how can you go wrong with that? But yeah, it was a great interview. Um, there's, and he even talks. I remember right about how things are changing on on Champlain too, and keeping up with it. Yeah, you know, there's such a. It is a pretty cool lake. Man. I thought it was. Yeah, he, didn't he say like every good, like tournament he's ever had there, he's never finished well in the same spot more than once. Yeah, he's always got to stay on top of them. And the other cool thing I thought he said was. I think he called it doing donuts. So when he's trying to find a fish on a bed and there's pollen or stuff, I just turn mm -hmm. his trolling motor on 10 and go yeah. in a circle to get that. I never heard of that. That was that's pretty oh, interesting. Sure. Well, under the radar right there. Yeah, that's just, man, I've done that. A lot of times it'll actually, it'll actually benefit you if you have some chop on the water to okay. do some donuts and then you can, but nowadays with the flogger and stuff, it's not, as big of a mm -hmm. uh, as big of a deal if that makes sense do you think that the flogger gets underutilized in other spawning event tournaments like why aren't people using that on let's say the chesapeake bay to fish for spawners do you think that would have any well, application there is that is deep. yeah i don't you, you know you have to have clear water for that yeah okay because i can think of some likes i mean up around my area where the water is clear enough for it. And there's just large mouth down there. I wondered if that might not be a bad thing to pick up. Alex, let me tell you a little bit about, uh, fish in uh, tidal water when they spawn, right? Yeah. They're weird because, and I don't know if Travis can verify this or not, but I've seen them to where their back fins literally out of the water sitting on a bed. Wow. Right? But here's the thing, when that fish, when it's low tide and that fish is on the bed, he's very, she's very hard to make eat, to get her to eat. As soon as that tide starts coming up and it covers that fish, is that true, a speed or no? What's that? I'd rather bed fish on the Chesapeake with high tide. I, I know where they're at and then go back and catch them because that low tide, they're spooky on the bed, man. They won't eat. I disagree. I'd rather have a low tide and clear and sunny and then go find them later yeah. in the year towards the end of the spawn. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know what I mean? You know, some people the, like the, apples and some people like cheese. By, <laughs> by mid June, I will take a, a dead low tide and sunny and go find those last remaining decent sized fish on beds i enjoy that the big ones do come in a little earlier though travis there's big there's tidal fish spawn so randomly bro i see it every year bro, you grew up in wisconsin <laughs> oh my god here we you, go you've been fishing tidal water for literally three years seriously what? dude i've been out here a while now how long you been here we came I got here more 16 2012 yeah and you had to ask everybody how to catch them on the back for two years so all you did was ask how you catch them how you catch them how you catch them i seen you i was with you i beat your ass so many times it's pathetic really? yeah you know it too pal I used, to be the king. I used to be the king of the bay and you know it you Wait, gonna reclaim know. that title this year jimmy heck no Those guys uh, are too they're too good scott <laughs> Somebody in the comments asked if I uh, believed in Nessie. No, I don't. You don't believe? That was... right. mm. That's the one in Champlain, right? Yeah. I do not. <laughs> Alex, let me tell you something. Those guys on the Chesapeake, they're, yeah. they're, they catch them, dude. They catch them. 
So we've had some conversation about this before in the show, Jimmy. Who's like, if you were thinking of three guys when you show up to the Chesapeake Bay ramp, who who do you not want to see there, Jimmy? Well, Dave Wilder's one of them. He's a great okay. fisherman. Really, I mean, amazing on the bay. Uh, John Venor. Yeah, I, I hear his name a lot. Probably De Palma. Okay. He's a good fisherman mm -hmm. out there. The, the, but there's 10 more right behind those guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Travis, you know, I mean, Travis catches them out there in the spring. In summertime, he can't get a bite. But in the spring, he catches them. What are you talking about? Dude, I've seen your videos. I've seen Dude. you and Jack out there throwing swim jigs. That was so eight years ago. Oh. You numb nuts. Oh. Oh. The, the main guy so on the bay. My question to you is, why do you leave June 15th and stay <laughs> away from the bay for fucking a year? Because I don't like the bay. The oh, because you know why? Because you can't catch those five patterns anymore. Because you have to sit in grass for three days and pitch a bait. You can't Listen, grass. Sammy, you're wrong. I would much rather guide. Where? In open water grass. I love grass fishing. That's my deal. Nothing better. Then have to do what I have to do. I know. I hate I hate dock fishing, dude, anymore. You know. I can't. I'm only busting your chops, Travis. I know. <laughs> but you do go up north for a reason. You do realize, Alex, I anybody do. can catch them up north, right? Yes. Jimmy, I want to introduce you to somebody. <laughs> a buddy of mine that is uh He's pretty cool. He reminds me of you, kind of. Uh oh. oh I seen him on the other day. J yesterday. Yeah, JP, Jimmy. What's going JP on, Jimmy? Bro? What's hey, up, buddy? Jimmy? Jimmy, uh, J JP is one of the top anglers on Lake Champlain when it comes to largemouth fishing. Oh, nice. Yeah. It sounds to me like I want to come down to the Chesapeake Bay when that grass is up. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, you don't want to do that, man. Oh, Seriously. Yeah. Jimmy really likes on. Jimmy's a big Champlain guy, but Jimmy likes that northern part of the lake too. I do. Now, now I JP's do. a southern guy, dude. Do you live you in like Ticonderoga? I, I'm two hours from Ty, but uh, yeah, I basically lived there all summer. <laughs> <sighs> That's Man. a long run. Man, I can't wait. Yeah, what do you I, mean I, you can't wait? You should be I just thinking can't about. Wait. The task at hand, dude. We got to go down to the James. I know. I'm looking forward to it. I got uh, all my stuff rigged tonight. Are you ready? Start loading my truck. Yeah, I'm ready. You got I got a little more. Rod? A one. <laughs> <laughs> Travis, how many do you have? I'll have 12 ready to go. At least. Wow. Do you have anything that's four inches or smaller? I do, I do. Not you. Below the zipper. <laughs> yeah, below the zipper. <laughs> yeah, besides the finger zipper, yeah. <laughs> no, I definitely got some downsized baits. Yeah. Yeah. JP, yeah. you're tall. Sense. If you're pushing only four inches, we got problems here. <laughs> JP, bring your orange dye. Do you have any orange spike it? Bring it with you. I do. Yep. Bring it with you. So, Jimmy, in your opinion, what's going to be going on on the James next week? What type of event is it going to be? Yeah, well, let's not. <laughs> not yet. I don't even know, dude. He wouldn't know. Jimmy doesn't know what the James even is. It's been years, bro. Years. Lopez, I'm hoping to put myself on some fish next week. Oh. You got to run the chick. You got to run the chick of hominy like everybody else. Yeah. That's where you win. Yeah, there's so many fish that have got deposited of up deposited up north through the years that you can win it within a half a mile from that boat ramp. Yeah, you could. Wow. When you going out of Osborne? Yeah. Yeah. It's there's a sixty big... mile run to the chick, ain't it? Something like yeah, that. Just about. Just about. There's big it's fish down in Osborne. Well, yeah, they're all replants. <laughs> have you guys oh. seen that study about the fish being transported from tournaments and how long they stay in that specific area where they get released in. I think they did on Champlain. I disagree with that because you would be really? able to catch a 25 pound bag at the Ticonderoga boat ramp every time. Right. <laughs> and it doesn't happen. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if I believe any of that science guys. In fact, I think over the last year with everything that's been going on around the country, that science is out the window dude it's all about people's agendas so when you get some guy telling you you're going to catch 25 you should catch 25 pounds of release fish out in front of you know 
Anchor Marina every week. <laughs> They're part of the deep, deep bass state as well, man. <laughs> Screw that. <laughs> yeah, the, I think the most misleading thing about that study was it was only on the fish that got reported back to them. So those other fish could have been caught anywhere else. And the person just didn't bother to call in or wasn't aware of the study. So who knows how accurate it really was. Mm -hmm. Man, the James river, a warming trend happening. It's hot. It's hot. Cold, down here. Yeah. But there's a cold front coming in on Friday. Perfect. And then, and then it's a perfect warming trend the rest of the week by tournament time to be back up in the high seventies. Yeah. It's been nice okay. here. It's really been nice. I'm about four hours from it, James. How far are we, Travis? About four and a half hours? I honestly don't know, Jimmy. Yeah, about so, four and a half hours. Oh, that's not bad. Five hours, yeah. Well, I expect to see, see you there Saturday to cheer me on. Where? Never. Oh, yeah. Over his head. <laughs> Is that a Thursday through Saturday event? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yeah. Gotcha. Well, Thursday, Friday, you got to make Saturday. Yeah, do. You do. You got to be there. Man, imagine being on the bubble, dude. Mm. Yeah. That's like, that's got to suck. I'll, I'll take 11th. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, yeah, good point. Yeah. You get your money back, at least it covers your trip. Well, no, it don't cover your trip. It covers your entry fee. Yeah. That's are about they, it. You got to they change the, the opens payouts money. at all? Yeah, that's what I was going to say, because I know pretty much – if you don't finish in the top 10, you're just getting your entry fee back. Have they altered that at all this year? Nah, the payout, so? the, yeah, the payouts are a little better now being that they're getting 230 votes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's good though. Hmm. You're still only around ninth place. 10th is around probably five grand right in that ballpark. JP, yeah. did you get the spreadsheet on the tides today? I, I did. I did. That was very good. nice. Thank you. You're welcome. It looks like we got maybe two hours of good tide both days. <laughs> now, JP, yeah. have you got the fish tidal order? Uh, I live on the Hudson River, but I don't fish it. That's not Thai. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Is ah. the Hudson? What's the swing on the Hudson? What's that? What's the tide swing on the Hudson? Four feet. Is it four feet? Four feet, but it's a 15-inch minimum, minimum fish, so the fishing's horrible until the fall. Yeah. I remember years ago, the Hudson was hot, man. Oh, it used to have no foil. It was great. And, yeah, back uh, the, in the, the, like mid nineties. Seriously, the, the good portion of it's about an hour and ten minutes from my house, and in an hour and forty minutes, I'd be to Champlain. So I just go the opposite way. I don't blame you. Mm -hmm. That's a no brainer. <laughs> Jim, you've been on the Delaware lately. Um, I went on the Delaware probably about a month ago. Okay. But they're they're eating now in the Delaware. It's time. <laughs> Definitely time. Where on the there, Hudson do you live? Castleton, New York. The Delaware has got about a six foot swing, at least. JP, you coming over to my house? We're gonna have a little sleepover, I guess, Thursday night, huh? Yeah, I am. Hey, That'd how's the fun. traffic gonna be um when I'm coming through Yonkers to get to your house? It's having me go right through the city. Nah, don't do that, man. Through Philly. So Jimmy, he's coming to my house to stay over for a few hours before we leave Thursday night. And so he's coming from say New York City, right? Yeah. Yeah. What what's his best route? Is it to oh, go where, down? Where, where um? I live by Albany. Oh, you? Why wouldn't you come right down the thruway then to two eighty seven in Jersey? Two eighty seven. That's what it's got me doing. Yeah, but that don't go into New York City. Oh, that's okay. Me. When I was looking at the Google Maps, no, I bring you straight down. You'll go. You'll come right they down past Bear Mountain and all that shit, and past Platts or um. You'll you'll come straight down. Albany's a straight run. I miss that drive up up to Champlain from that way. I fished Lake George for years. Lake George can suck a big. <laughs> That's one, a dude. great lake. Yeah. Forty bucks to launch a boat. But it's a great lake if you're there. They, at the you lake gotta now. check. They gotta check your boat. No, you, just, gotta, you gotta check you for right STDs. I mean, it's just a hassle, dude. <laughs> you go right into Ticonderoga and you launch on the north end. I've won a couple tournaments on Lake George. It's good fishing. Right by the Minnehaha. Mm -hmm. Down south. The village of Lake George. That's How good is it? Fishing down there. Uh, I won one tournament, nineteen pounds, and another one, eighteen pounds. It's deep, deep fishing. It is deep. Deep, deep clear water. The large mouth. I was catching them 35, 40 feet. There's a lot of bluff banks, Travis. The whole west, the whole east side of the lake, south is all. It's gorgeous as far as real estate. Yeah. 
Oh, Some beautiful. of the best homes I've ever seen on lakes have been on Lake George. I guess you guys aren't in Has the closed season been lifted on the Hudson? I didn't know there was one. Fuck it, just fish. JP, <laughs> can I ask you a question? Yes, I, sir. Are you allowed to fish right now on Champlain? Yes. I noticed guys are fishing on the lake. I didn't know if how New York was with that. That's it's, open. It's catch, catch and release. immediate release. The best time of year right now. Sean, yeah, they did, did they did they did get my truck fixed. There's the bill. Another another is, monthly bill. Is all the is Cayuga the same, Oneida and all them lakes in New York? Yeah. Yes. Okay. How much was the bill? Travis. Oh, nine hundred bucks. Oh my god. Jeez. What the hell did they even do? Dude, this is every other month. Uh should have bought a tundra, dude. Oh, here we go. Replace valve cover, gas, left side valve cover. Um, replace failed oil pressure sending unit, oil pressure switch. Basically, there's a glitch in the system that didn't affect the performance of the truck, but they wanted to charge me 500 bucks to fix that little glitch. Hmm. Sick of it, dude. Got to get the bow tie, bro. I don't know what to get because that you ask, you go online. Don't ever ask somebody their opinion on a vehicle or a boat on Facebook. <laughs> I seen that. Holy crap. That's what my rant was last week. Like we need one solid company that everyone can agree. Like one thing that's like, this is the truck. This is the I, boat. I think Tundra's probably had most of the. For I don't want. 10 mile a gallon truck dude no i know that's what you know that's what you get yeah mine was a beast man that thing was suck fuel man i don't want to send my money to japan as little as possible yeah <laughs> japan what's wrong with japan they bombed pearl harbor what's wrong with japan well we actually if you really look into it there's a lot more than what you think went on there <laughs> in world war ii bro don't believe what they're telling you <sighs> travis what year's your truck 2017. Because I have a 19 and it's a piece of shit, dude. 19 it's what? F-150. It's it's a rattle box. Sounds like the motor's <laughs> coming apart, dude. It's Whatever. hard. Huh? You know what the you know what the problem with a Ford is? It's what? circled and it's highlighted in blue. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, it's looks great. a hell of a lot better than a Silverado, Brohim. Yeah, but the Silverado doesn't leave you on the side of the road. I'd rather look cool yeah, on the side of the road. Yeah, you know what? You get, a, you get a damn, what do you call it, a 2500? They're nice trucks, dude. <laughs> With the diesel? Yeah. Duramax? Is it Duramax Chevy? Yeah. I can't afford that. I got the gas job. Yeah. What do you got? Is just a regular uh, 1500? Silverado? 1500 quad cab, yeah. Yeah, hey, by the way, nice. by the way, two months ago. one hour and 14 minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Eric. Epic Eric. My phone call. Look at this five banger, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Where the hell you at, man? Is your phone broke, Eric? I'm still down in Carolina. I can't seem to come home. It's crazy. Dang. <laughs> What's going on? Wow. I'm asking you, is your phone broke? What are you trying to say? <laughs> We're pissed off at you, Eric. Dude, man. You, you didn't dude, call dude. me all week. I call you and Scooter, you. You. You and Scooter got response. something going on. <laughs> it's a pile on. <laughs> How'd the Bojangles work out for you? That's what it I wasn't, want to know. It wasn't the Bojangles. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that $800 first place check work Woo! out for you? Man. Well, he didn't win, or else he would have definitely called me. Oh, you know that's a fact for sure, man. <laughs> I was involved in a, in a very all-day, long-term uh, project that was just a ball buster, man. A ball buster. That's all I can say, man. We didn't finish till like 7.30 in the middle of a lightning storm in a shower outside with another dude. Daniel, Daniel in the comments had a good point. $900 repair bill on my truck does buy a lot of gas. So maybe I do need to go to a Toyota. You got a Toyota, Eric. Is that a fuel? That thing drinks, doesn't it? Um, it, It's, you know, 20 miles to the gallon. Yeah, but you have the SUV one. Yeah, I have the 4Runner. Love yeah. it. I love I know it. you do. Proof for liability, though. 
That's all I care about. Reliable. Yeah. And it's got a nice little system in the back now, you know? Yeah. For tackle, that uh, strong uh, thing they make for it. Did any of you guys get a phone call about your extended warranty today? I got two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do you mean? My Don't wife gets stop. my wife my wife gets all fired up because I'll put it on speakerphone and I press one to talk to the representative. Yeah. And then I ask him, "How would you like it if I called you every five minutes, pal?" You know. What I, mean? <laughs> I you know what I, that's funny because I when I'm bored I'll do the same thing, but mostly it's people who want to send me money like business loans. So I'll oh, take nice. the call and then I'll start talking to like I want to order a pizza. So I'll literally be like, yeah, I want a uh, large pepperoni. And it, it throws them off, dude. And I'll just keep repeating until they hang up or call me an asshole. Man, that's perfect. <laughs> it's fun. It's something to do, man. When I'm driving back from the Chesapeake, I got nothing to do. No conspiracies to listen to. I'm just all by myself. I'll take that call. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. I try to sell them shit all the time. <laughs> Eric, you ever meet JP? I no. This well, is going I know he's part of the team, right? Yeah. And he was the guy with the baits that got stolen or something. So that co angler yeah, that never, called me that day, Eric and I were in the boat. I was on the boat that with him. Phone call. <laughs> Literally, Don't the guy oh, was. That's you. He was. Don't just, steal yeah, my that's baits. Him. That's him, dude. He was what, destroyed. What baits were they? Well, uh, yeah. rubber worm. <laughs> oh, oh, you're one of those. So he's really not on the team. Well, because if, if he was on the team, he would have said he knows oh, when to keep his out. mouth shut. <laughs> it's That's the important worm. part. Yeah, Eric, the reason why hey, a lot of people quit bass fishing. <laughs> here's a cool. Here's a Our cool part, guys. Like you, JP. <laughs> hey, here's the cool part about this week on the James River. Um, official practice. And I'm going to double check and JP can confirm official practice is Monday. So any day prior to Monday, we can fish with whoever we want. Is that correct? Correct. I think if Eric's still up for it, Eric said he's going to roll with me on Friday. I'm good, man. I'm coming. Cool. That'll be fun. We'll go mess around. And uh, we got a house. If you want to come over after, we might do a live that night just to That'd hang out, whatever you want. Sure. Um, we'll have the crew with us. I'll, uh, I have a game plan. That I don't want to, I'm not going to say it course over the air here but yeah, you guys. it's a little my first day of practice on a new body of water it's always something a little out there and you're gonna enjoy it eric but it's not what you think okay um and i do that on every body of water i go to the first day or two of practice like when i went to champlain jp uh for an open a few years ago guess where i launched i don't even remember it was like mid lake along these big bluffs right right like so like in the middle of the north and the south yeah because that's that's, that's how i like to kind of explore those first two days of practice different. is doing something totally off the wall but it's I'm either down for it man i mean you know i've spent most of my time a little bit in the james yeah and uh, most of the time in the chick so i'm down for something different cool cool very cool that'll be fun so you are coming home are you gonna yeah, man. Yeah. I'll finally be at my house like on Saturday. This Saturday. I haven't been away for four Wait. weeks. Longest time I've ever been away. Has your has your family been down there with you? Uh Margaret is now on the West Coast. Uh, but yeah, she was here for two weeks with me. Okay. Along with my son, yeah. Who Meg was? No, Meg's on the West Coast. Oh. My, my yeah, Max and Margaret are on the West Coast right now. Oh, they are? But, yeah. So oh, I'm nice. still here getting the I'm getting the place ready for rental. The rental season. So Dude, you've been getting there for for two, three months. Come on. That's a stupid excuse. You're not allowed to use that anymore. It's <laughs> rental season, bro. Stop me and right in your head. No, my my I don't open up till June. No, 1, you want to go fucking go fish a foot of water with scooter for some reason in these <laughs> bojangles and you're hooked on it. Admit it. <laughs> that was it. We fished a Collins this weekend. It's cat Collins and Bojangles and Angler's Choice. Four trails. Jeez. That's crazy. I literally this weekend caught the shortest, fattest largemouth bass I've ever caught and ever seen. Mm -hmm. They've been in the woods in a flooded Roanoke River since November. 
and they just dropped the water like five foot. So it's three foot below the bank. So all these fish have been eating crawfish and whatever else they can find in the woods completely unmolested for, for months. And we ran 70 miles up river one way. Wow. Caught a limit really fast. Just missing hey, one big bite. Real quick. I, I'm, I missed some comments. People are asking about the Corrados. Um, I had a, a gentleman on a guide trip earlier this week that had the Corrado Digital. Yeah. I was kind of intrigued by it. Is that the one you don't get a backlash with? Apparently. Yeah, I have two of them. I throw them. Do you they're, like they're them? Good. I do. I do. Really? If you, can get, if you can get used to the sound. I say, yeah. Uh... Yeah, well, that's what... That that's what drew my attention to yeah, is real. Like, <laughs> I'm yeah. like, well, what exactly is that you got there, son? Yeah. And uh listen, I'll 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 admit this. I have a couple Corrado K's, especially with like say a, a Senko um or some type of lighter finesse bait. I can't seem to get I'll have to I don't get a backlash, but I get to the point where you got to take line out and there's always that loop. And mm -hmm. you ever guys get this where you might have 20 yards of line out before that loop comes out? Like, oh, do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is that just what happens? Is that a oh. common occurrence? It happens to me often. Yeah. The, the, if, you, if you want to splurge, go for the metanium. It's probably one of the smoothest ones that they make. It's like that, butter, dude. but I want to know if I'm the only one that gets that loop in the line where you have to literally have 50 yards of line out and it's almost <laughs> off the spool and then you're reeling in the boat and then it gets stuck on your reel handles that are laying there. <laughs> like, no, does that, that happens to me every day. Yeah. I bought one Corrado. Okay. And that, guys aren't that, that, or what? that thing's in the garage. I don't even really? take it out anymore. So My I, favorite was the E7. The green one. Yeah, the E7. I'm a lose guy. I can't help you. I heard you. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I rock. The lose super duty. I love that thing. There JP, go. I got your I got oh, your man. line too, by the way. What yeah, Cortland? Cortland line. Yeah. Excellent. Um yeah, you gotta take that. I got two two bulk spools for you ready to go. Nice. Mm. Have you tried, Travis, like a reel with a shallower spool, like one of the MGL type reels, anything like that? No, I've been Corrado and that Corrado, whatever it is, the standard K, is it? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Travis, what I think's happening to you when you make that cast and the bait hits the water, you initially engage the reel. So your line's a little slack. Yes. So when you engage the reel, it puts that little loop in there. So instead and then of on your next instead, cast, instead of just, I always feed line a little bit and then tighten it up with my hand on the line. Yeah, Kent in the me. comments, Kent in the comments goes, "It happens if you don't have it tight when you right. start to reel your line back up." Where does it say that at? In the comments, there. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean that's what I think. Spinner reels are worse, dude. When, <sighs> with that. Interesting. But I don't have problems with spinning. Worse is when you get the loop and then you go to cast again and it just burns it. And How many times does that happen? You ever get that oh, line just man. breaks? Yep. Oh, oh my God. Worse. How about when you're how about you're taking it off the spinner reel and it's just never ending? <laughs> <laughs> it's like where the fuck is this going? Like, I've had my I've had my shit. I'm already down to the braid and I'm I'm into the backing. Where is the the, the only no. issues the only issues I have with a spinning reel is when Tom knees in my boat and gets it stuck in the trolling motor and eats up half the line, or <laughs> when I leave my baits kind of hanging on the side and or That's maybe cool. a bait broke off and then that line. And you run into your next spot and you realize your line's gone. You ever have that? Yeah, you know, that's how you straighten your line. You guys you, know that? <laughs> have you ever had that? Yeah. I'm I want to hear some of the worst. Tip. What are some of the tackle. biggest things that pisses you off on the water when it comes to your gear and equipment? That's what I want to know. I got a quick tackle tip for you guys. You ready? Yeah. Aaron yeah. probably knows this one. If your line's fucking, you know, if you don't change it, you know, like less than you change your underwear, you know, it gets coiled all the time just open the bail when you're just putting travis right let yeah. the line out right 
click the bell and drag the line for five minutes with no bait on it with no bait on it and then crank it in as you're coming and that and that fucking line will be poker straight right Eric? Well, that, yeah. well that's that's if you're weird and use fluorocarbon so braid really doesn't use that braid i don't get too many how's braid good <laughs> I'm just saying. So here's one. I, I was, I was, I was setting up my uh, my top water rod today, and I spooled it up with a 20 pound braid, and then I did like a foot and a half liter of 17 pound mono, so I'd have a little bit of stretch. Yeah. How are you liking that? I've been fishing that way for a little bit, and, and I'm loving it. Hmm. You like it? I'm, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. On your sp on your spooks or your pop bars? Pop bar. I'm doing hmm. it on both. Do you do it on a buzz bait, Eric? I do. I was yep. thinking straight braid with the buzz bait, but I think you can. Yeah. But I, I like that little bit of you know. Uh, probably doesn't matter. It's just in my head. I know I'm putting a knot in it, but um, you know, won a derby on gas in a scooter last year throwing that buzz bait. He was throwing the frog, and I had my twenty pound. I was throwing twenty pound, big game because you know big game is just beefy. That's the right? best line ever, right? It's like yeah. you break it, dude. It's really tough. I'll like it until the knot fails. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Hey, man. I, hey, no, by I the way. Why are you saying that? I haven't had it happen yet. Come on, man. Hey, no thinks me, bro. Eric, I got two questions, two two little funny stories about knots. So yeah. uh, Austin Neary was, was fishing with me. And he tied that double that San Diego something, something jam. Hey, San Diego and that. jam. Anyway, so I tried it, and I, I don't have it down, but I actually I did tie it. I would never be able to tie it. Without watching the YouTube video, you know, you're talking about you make, you, you make a <laughs> but, loop and then you yeah, whatever. Down seven so I got down, one of my up. big glides ready to go, tied oh, up God. the way they're supposed to. <laughs> okay, and then uh, Jack, our buddy Jack, stopped over to my house today, and I was trying to teach him the braid to fluoro knot. Yeah, and then I was trying to show how I use my tongue more than anything. It's it's like a second finger, and he just couldn't get it, and. uh <laughs> I'm like, okay, Jack, it's, you got one hour to go. You need one more good fish and there's four footers out here. How in the frick are you going to tie this knot? Yeah. It ain't going to happen. I go, your best friend here is going to be one of them little swivels. Perfect. <laughs> true. Love it. That's what Very you got to do if you can't get it right. Very true. Mm -hmm. Power Pro makes a great little swivel, man. It's like 30 pound and it's micro. It's micro, isn't it, Eric? Yeah, man, that power Love pro it. swivel. Is that the one you're right talking about? It goes right through the guides. It goes right through the guides. I use it for trout fishing down here in the, in the salt. It works great. It's got some pretty <laughs> heavy yeah, pressure on it. Second on, uh, finger. Straight braid. <laughs> straight braid, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Like 30, 30 pound braid. Sure. But I use a you know, medium heavy rod, something that's got a little bit of give, you know. You know, it loads up, let it load up, you know. I can uh, count on. Two hands, the number of uh, buzz bait fish I've caught in my life. So I'm hoping to catch. I'm hoping to catch 15 of them. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah, man, you better have that, have that buzz. Do you bait have any black in JP? What's you that? Black? You have a black buzz bait? Oh yeah. Hey, you like the buzz best bait buzz bait, the best buzz bait ever got. Uh, I like Co buzz baits. Co English Sean gave me one on the James River, and I caught some fish on it. Not that that not that tournament, but the the following year. And now it's 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 in my buzzbait box, but I can't remember exactly which one he gave me. <laughs> and so I think I have it tied on right now, but I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> kind of pissed. I, I was like, God, I would really wish I remembered exactly. Travis, which there one. was this good buzzbait video. I think it was on what's YouTube channel? Oh, Smallmouth Crush. I know Every, everything you we went. <laughs> Man. Well, we did a good live stream one, Eric. Yeah, that's what I mean. Well, Jimmy and I did one too. Uh, and the I, comments from I that really video like are like, uh, all you did was show us buzz baits and then throw them against the wall. Oh my God, those were hysterical. Remember that man. one, Jimmy? Yeah, that's all we did. That's when we first started. We were trying to figure out our niche in the YouTube game. It which was we a Yeah, we didn't know I what we were doing. I don't I ever have any luck with the video. With was the best. Yeah, we talked about that earlier about today. That today. I don't I don't ever have any luck with the with the toad on the back of the buzz bait though. Up See, I you I, know what I use? I, I don't like the toad. I like the Z crawl. Zoom yeah. Z crawl. That's what I see Woody Cough did that, Eric, too. Uh or a little boy. speed crawl too. 
if well, the bait's really small. The zoom that's what uh, Swindell does. Swindell does his, he does the Z crawl. Yes. Yeah. He's a big zoom guy. He loves pitching that too, man. Yeah. I mean, I think I think you can throw that. Here's here's the case for the Z crawl. Oh, you I got to show you the dumbest buzz bait. You in can the world. use it on a swim jig. You can use it on a buzz bait. I mean, that's a pretty versatile bait right there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, know, I put that swing and hammer on there, Eric. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. I've done a little bait fish imitation on it too. Yeah. I didn't do a big one like that though. You liked it. Yeah. Big swing and hammer. Wow. Yeah. That's a four and a half inch. That's five. Damn, that's a big that's a big body on the back of that. But I actually got some big bikes for you, didn't it? Yeah. Can yeah. can somebody in the comments let me know? Okay, so I was down on a Chickamauga, and I had just had a feeling that I was in the tackle store, and I'm like, you know what? I like to pick up baits. I should pick up a buzz I bait. That. I hate that. Bait. I picked I this it. jackal gargle, and it's all about new innovation, wire bait, free swing in, sputter sound. I'm all excited. In the back, it goes. So I'm tying this on in the morning, getting ready to throw in that grass bed I was talking about, Eric. And and I read in the back, it goes, it's not a buzz bait. I'm like, oh, shit. Or a spinner bait. It's a new unpresented wire bait. That's what it freaking says right here. Any instructions on how to fish it? I don't, I just <laughs> tied it on. I tied this black one on. Yeah, they got me for 40 bucks for two, right? I tied this black one on. There's a braid still on to prove. Looks like and bucks. the but thing sunk. First of all, I realized after three casts, I need, as soon as it hits the water, I need to start cranking on this hard because it starts sinking. And I could not get it to run right. So let me know in the comments if you ever use this <laughs> stupid thing. And maybe I'm missing the boat, but it is the dumbest uh it's stupid. Wow, Bill said junk. <laughs> Do you guys like the big blade or the small blade? <laughs> I'll play around with the blade combinations. Like I'll throw a if I want to want to you know like in the warmer water and I want to move that buzz bait faster, I'll take a half ounce head with a three eighths or a quarter ounce blade. You know, and if I want to really move it slow in the spring when the water temps a little little cooler, I'll have a half ounce blade on a three eighths ounce buzz bait. Could really just creep it along. You know. So I, I change it up. Hmm. Eric, when are you choosing skirt or no skirt? Man, I tell you, I don't, you know. I if, heard I heard no skirt in the fall is yeah. going to be better. Ba bait fish, when the bait fish are prevalent, you know, and I'm really trying to imitate a bait fish, um, I'm, I'm using no skirt and maybe putting a, a bait fish style like fluke or a Z-craw on it, you know what I mean? If I'm trying to slow it down and float the bait, a really fluffy skirt, so maybe in the spring, the, the bulk, bulkier profile. Um, and I tend to be target fishing then, so I'm not trying to make long cast. Uh, if I'm fishing grass and I want a longer cast, um, you know, I like that Z craw on the grass. So spring, fluffier, float to bait, slower retrieve. Here's one quick. trailer hook for no trailer hook. With a Z craw, I don't feel like trailer hook. Trailer. Um, and I use a saltwater assist hook, which is pretty tricky that I don't know if many people have used it, but it's, uh, it's made by uh, Gamakatsu, and it's got, uh, you know, the, the line. line, the line Listen, yeah. in, in the comments, uh, Eric did turn me on to a buzz bait little deal on the Potomac a few years ago, and I did catch a few keeper fish in that tournament. So, yes, Joe, you're, you are correct. And, Eric, I do want to say, because I didn't know which one Sean gave me, yeah. I said, screw it. I took that buzz bait you gave me that I caught that that big one on in practice, Yeah, and I put that on the on the rod here to go down to the James with. But I got a new black and yellow skirt that Sweet. I put on it. So I changed the skirt out. Um, I trimmed the skirt a little bit, you know, yeah. so it's not so far past the shank. Yeah. Because I remembered how you were talking about the, 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 from the hook to the blade is important, you know, that Very gap important. to be able yeah. to get those bites. I did put a trailer hook on it. Yeah. And so I do plan on chucking that a little bit. And I know that our, our, our friends at, um, at Tackle HD, also had a buzz bait. I think they sent you some hand ties. They, they did. It's the it's the worldwide buzzer by James Watson. Similar yeah. head style. Did they send you a black and yellow? Yeah. Cool. 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 Yep. Cool. Yeah. So we'll have to um. Nice I'm not. Head. I'm yep. not the expert on buzz baits. I I I get freaked out because you know I've caught when I I was joking about you know ten fish. You know I've caught more than that, but I just it's not something I would gravitate to the first pick up and use. But I know it has its time and place. JP calls me last week and goes, "Trav, how you 
this was his opening line to like get my attention. How do you store your buzz baits? And I'm like, wow, I just because I really think we're gonna need them on the James. I'm like, what are you, where are you going with this, bro? I'm telling you, they catch big fish. They do, they do. They catch big fish. Oh. Let me tell you a quick buzz bait story. So me and my yeah. buddy Gino, we're down in Thai, right? We're practicing for this team tournament that's going out of Plattsburgh. So we're catching big fish all over the lake. And uh, I bent the hook over on a, on a jig, right? I flip it in this weed mat and he's like, shake it off, shake it off, right? And even though the hook was completely bent over, I catch a five pounder, right? Oh my God. So, so we're, 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 we're man, right? So I'm like, never mind, dude. I'll just try to sh- get one to show up on the stupid buzz bait, right? <laughs> Throw the buzz bait out, five and a half pounder swallows it, right? I'm like, oh my God. So the next morning, we're, we're super excited about this tournament, right? Hands down, they were just biting like crazy down south. So uh, I'm a big guy. G- Gino's bigger than me. And uh, in the morning, we're sitting there waiting to take off. And I'm like, man, this ride is going to suck. It is blowing so hard. So we start going down, right? We're the only boat heading south. And we're going down. And it seems like we're in the boat for 30 minutes. And I'm like, dude, I don't even think we're out of Cumberland Bay yet. And I look over at him and he's like, yeah, keep going, right? So I keep going, right? Now, now I'm down by like maybe like the entrance to Mallets, not that far, right? And I look over and I go, we ain't making it. It's not worth it. You know? I'm going to destroy my boat. We might win three grand. It's it's just not worth the risk, right? And he goes, oh, I wish you turned around 10 minutes ago. <laughs> But then bu- them buzz baits, you might not get a lot of bites, but they attract bigger fish, in my opinion. No doubt. No doubt. And I think it will be a player because if they're spawning right now, in two yeah. weeks, a lot of I them got won't that. be spawning and they'll be fry guarding. Sure. Yeah, you better you better have your frogs ready, your Ricos ready, your buzz baits ready for sure. It, I got, it is I going got. it is going down. On the I James got, River. I got that rusty pivot still on that buzz bait, dude. <laughs> no, that's a good thing. Yeah, it is. It squeaks. That was yeah, Eric's man. freaking. He claims that's... he built that buzz bait himself. So we'll see. No, it's it's a bass alarm, you know, frame, and then rusted the yeah. rivet. You make the hole a little bit larger. You rough up the wire arm, man. You get it squealing right out of the back. Yeah. I put a little bead on the front so the grass doesn't get hung in the blade, man. Trick it out. Hmm. Trick it out. Flatten. Do you this, think that flatten the head of the rivet? Do you think that bead that they talked about on that last Patreon where we, uh, for the free rig, would that type of bead work on front of a buzz bait? Man, you can just go to uh, Bass Pro and get some beads for fly tying, you know? Mm-hmm. I use brass or silver, whatever. You think Randy think Black is throwing a buzz bait? Honestly, it could be a plastic know. bead. What you trying to do is keep the grass out of the hoe. Why you, know? you bring up Randy again? I don't know. He posted another damn video and it had 3,000 likes. How is he getting these likes? Well, well he's, he's it's a different, it's a different <laughs> trap. All these co- couple of the haters in here comment. Well, you know, he just, he's got a better following. You know, he relates better to the viewers, Travis. That's why he's got 30,000. I think, I think he, I honestly think you want to know my, my opinion. I mean, I've watched a lot of his videos. Man, they're just short seven-minute tips with packed with information. Whether you like the tips or not, <laughs> that's what it is, man. He's and he's publishing what two, three a week. Who is it, dude? I'm publishing two. Who is it, Randy Blackett? Randy Blackett. Yeah, and then he's connected with the for- informative angling guy. I'm sure they're tagging all those videos like crazy. I think he knows social media pretty well too. Seems to me he's got to be sixty-five. <laughs> At least the seventeen year cicada he's will be there. out soon. Yeah, he's 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 older. Who that? Mid June doctor. Um <clears throat> Eric, it's gonna be fun though. I'm looking Eric. forward. Eric, Hold I want on. you to hang out with us Friday night. We're gonna go live Friday night. We're gonna try to go live after we fish. If you if you sure. can if you if you want. Um hooks bent. No, we're not hooking a whole lot. I'll let you hook a fish or two, Eric. We're just going to have fun, dude. I can't wait to fish with you. It's been so long. Like, I don't remember last time we went fishing. Again. Neither do I. Well, it was that jerk bait episode. Now I remember. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. Bait. Um, I bought the little screws that you tie on, so I won't even have a hook. Yeah. Not even taking that chance. 
with a screw lax. Well, how did Buddy Gary do in that Wisco event, man? Not good. No, did you see the results? I didn't look. I, talk, I talked to him today. He said he had 13 pounds. Come Ooh, on. Not good. Why? I think he said he was 13th place, 19 pounds, one. How? Wow. Huh. Uh, he said that the wind blew like 40 miles an hour and muddied up the lake, and he had to like scratch what he was doing and run to a different spot at the end of the day just to get a limit. That'll happen on those big buys of water. Listen, th we're talking about Lake Winnebago had their first Wisco tournament of the year. Gary had like a huge sack in practice, and we thought he was going to do well. He normally does well there. But, man, and it sounds like Bago's on its – upswing it's back to where it used to be i i got that that was one lake where i had literally 150 waypoints and i would hit 75 of them in a day it Dang. was it was such a different way for me to fish than i do nowadays but i was the run and gun the five to eight cast guy per spot and then hit the next hit the next hit the next and dang it if i wouldn't find them every once in a while doing that Super fun way to fish. Challenging, but it, it 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 allowed you to like have hope. You know what I mean? Like you you're right. on your fifth cast yeah. and you're like, well, this ain't working. Well, we got another, you know, two hundred yards this way is another rock pile, and that's all I did, man. I utilized side image like crazy. I spent months and months out there side imaging stuff, and I still got a chip with all the. All those waypoints there, and it's it's nice to see that that lake's coming back. It reminds me of a Oneida Lake. That's why I think Gary, and Gary's one of the guys that we're teaming up with for the Opens. That's why I think he's going to do well, even though he's never been to Oneida. It's going to remind him of Lake Winnebago back home, and I think he'll make those adjustments. That's a great um, lake. Oneida's a great Oneida. lake. You know what, Jimmy? You haven't seen the last four or five years of what that lake's been from its heyday, you know? Why it has Isn't changed. That? It's horrible. Eric's it really? been there. Eric's sampled it a little bit and he caught the sores, you know. Yeah, they had sores on them. You caught that bass that was all messed up. Yeah. You go from catching, you know, 50, 60 fish on a Saturday, and now you're hoping to catch seven. Wow. Really? Wow. That's true. Crazy. Was that just from pressure? Was it the disease? What I mean, what causes that? The fish died. I think How's that class of fish uh, died. How's the grass, JP? There is no grass. What? Nothing, no nothing grass. like it used to be. Damn. I mean, there's there's small grass right out on out on, on the shoals, but there's no milfoil. There's no milfoil oh, in any of those days. No. Wow. There's your answer. Uh, Game used over. Used to be fields of milfoil. You could oh, flip, yeah. for, the, you could flip yeah. for smallmouth. It was great, you know. That's yeah. crazy. Every day was full of milfoil. Who gets mm -hmm. to do that? Flip for smallmouth. Eric, can uh, you see the comments? Oh yeah, I used to take a three quarter ounce tungsten I, I weight. Only okay, like with, one at uh, a time. No. With a chigger craw, three quarter ounce, and punch the milfoil and catch good smallmouth. You know, uh, but the chigger craw, dude. <laughs> chigger craw is one of the best soft plastic flipping baits there is. Can you have down. one of them Big on crap. next week? No. <laughs> I'm gonna nestle up in a nice little area and sling a couple finesse baits around all day. Henry Friska thinks that it's the algae bacteria doing something to the fish. It does get a nasty algae bloom. I mean, it looks like pea soup. That's like July, August, right? Usually, yes, yeah. yes. What's going you know, on with that? JP, it, I it it's too, always. Right? It happens on Lake Winnebago. Yeah, oh, wow. it happens here too in all the lakes. Yeah. Pea soup. JP, Jimmy's Jimmy knows Champlain very well too. You you love it there. I do. We I need do to do. Uh, why aren't we all fishing the opens, Eric and Jimmy? Me, not me, but Jimmy or something. I I yeah. What Eric, that, why why don't we do? Let's plan something. How about we all we, fish the, the no? The we need to do we need to do something fun next year, a tournament, maybe a team event. That's fine, but we all work together. I'd love to do that. Like uh, like go to some cool lake. You know, I don't care. Like we gotta get everyone that's kind of part of our little, even like 
BTC and Riz that and would be so much Eric fun, man, and to Jimmy like work together, film and, it all. Yeah, yes. And I would, I would be down for that in a big way. A little team event somewhere. That's what I'm talking about. We'll, we'll, we'll get Alex out there on location. That'd be awesome. That's let's fun. go fish the Bojangles, Travis. That'd be fun. <laughs> no, somewhere up north. Jimmy, are you fishing the ABA in Champlain? Scooter, you and Scooter um, gotta come up. Dude. You know what? I, I really haven't. He would uh, love to come up. North. I know I'm fishing the BFL up there. Um, I the, I haven't looked at the schedule for the so ABA you like, up there. You, you the like the North End, open. Man. huh? You prefer the North End? I do. Why they go down yeah. to tie? He yeah, fishes. Oh, that's okay. JP, I mean, JP, he fishes right next to Woolock that their their rub rails rub each other all day. Long. Oh yeah, that's oh. what Jimmy does. We were banging fucking outboards last time I fished there with him. <laughs> he pulled right in on me, dude. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, really? I'm like, damn, Dave. <laughs> Did you just put it on the trailer like Randy Haynes and go home? No, man, I went up and caught a bigger bag up north, up in Vermont. Hell yeah. Yeah. What happened hey. to Randy Haynes? That guy was awesome. I don't know. Randy, so whatever happened to Tom LeVictory? He still fishes. Is I don't he, know. He, he won't get back to me. I asked him to be on the podcast. Never heard a he's word. He's not going to give up any information. No, no. <laughs> he knows what he's going to give up. No there. info. Isn't he Mr. Champlain, JP? Like, yeah, it's pretty good. Back in the day, man. Yeah, His old man, good. too, right? Yep. That's it. We need to do a smallmouth crush open. You know Jimmy on- Kennedy? That's what we're doing. Yeah, I, I don't. Think, Travis, I agree. You don't know Jimmy Kennedy, huh? Wow. No. Maybe Thumbs on the up, bay. Travis. Maybe on the bay. Small mouth. No, no. <laughs> no, no tidal water. No. <laughs> God, I hate that. Shit. We could get sponsors. We could actually get a probably a big purse. You know, good money. Why do you Henry, have? Small Henry mouth says the same open. thing. He says the victory ain't telling you nothing. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he won't tell you nothing, right? I've never fished. Yo, I used to fish red man's with him. JP, that's how long ago that was. Him and his father both fished the Red Man circuit back in the day. Bang. Yeah. We need Listen. a new circuit. They need a professional team circuit. Yes, that's what I've been in, saying for you, years. In you New remember York. Remember Lee Bailey you know? circuit? Remember Lee Bailey? Yes. You remember fishing the, the Foxwood circuit? I fished that for two no, years. Foxwoods, yep. That was yep. a great circuit. Yeah, that was what? back when Sar- Saratoga Lake was on fire. Yeah. Saratoga. Yep. They fished the Mohawk River. We did all kind yep. of crazy shit. And um, <laughs> guess what? Somebody robbed all the money. Oh. Yep. Somebody stole all Lee Bailey's money, so he says. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a likely story. I, I mean, I'd, I'd love like- to see a, uh, a, a, a team tournament trail with a, with a $1,500 entry fee, two-day event, four, <laughs> four tournament series. Totally. That's what I'm talking did. about. It was 500 back in the day, and he gave a boat away every tournament. That's so yep. crazy. Every man. tournament. Yeah. All right. That's it. That's what we're doing. <laughs> I'm going to do casinos something. Casinos behind him. Me and Fox with Casino behind him on that whole deal. Oh, yeah. Who's going to be my teammate? Eric, we almost have to be teammates. That's true. To only It would only work that way. Be up north. Yeah. The big water. But we can get Scooter, Scooter I'll and call, Jimmy, I'll call or victory. I'll call Tom up and see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> hey Jimmy, Jimmy, I got a big old fat Roanoke bass. I used the Epic Eric Bass Lab Shaky Jig Worm and your finesse worm. Oh, did they you? They were crushing it. Nice. I like had twenty bass on one bank that I knew we weren't going to fish. Man, it's nice. great. They yeah, for, the literally four destroyed it. My the fat little babies, man. It was unreal. <laughs> hey, yep. I got a better idea. Crush Why it. don't I know you don't want to do title, but what if we did a title in the spring, like in April of next year, where all you can throw, just like they do the Spros, it would be the TK special June bug square bell. <laughs> and and we'd have let's say we draw like 20 teams. Wouldn't that be cool? That'd be fun. Something like that, dude. You can mix Something in some JBC big big time baits too. Yeah, I like that June bug square bill. All right, me too. Like that's it. That's all you can throw is a square bill. How many people are going to be in the slow no wake rock? There's going to be two guys in the whole tournament. You and Eric. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. It'll be you and Eric. You win. JP, I'm with you, buddy. Let's champagne. That's where we're going. Oh yeah. Fuck those guys. 
<laughs> Ooh, and online, you know, we can do online events too. They do yeah, have you could do you could do Champlain, um, Ontario, Saint Clair, and Erie. A four tournament series. It would be phenomenal, Dude, and, it, and it would be just like Lopez it. said, just like Lopez <laughs> said, o- open format because not everybody's going to want to travel, but there'll be enough locals that want to get in so that your boat numbers are up. But heavy, heavy payback and heavy entry. Heavy payback. Fifteen hundred dollar entry fee. Hundred percent payback. Why does, does why does someone crush, how does smallmouth crush make money then? You don't. <laughs> you, oh, know, okay. like, you get such publicity. All right, fine. <laughs> it's always about a dollar with you. Well, that's I, the problem. That's the problem with I just the. I want team to be able to pay for my gas to get out there. I'm going to need to buy a big trailer. Do you know how much money Wisco, my buddy Kyle, runs the Wisco? Kind of blew my mind how much they they paid as far as like a startup. For even just like the trailers and the banners and the like, uh, it was a chunk of change to run a series. You know what oh, I mean? You really, you really don't need the big it's trailer. It's nice to have it. Ah, uh, Greenbush Bass is pulling seventy-five boats, and they do it out of the bed of a pickup truck. Wow, <laughs> they do it out of the bed of a pickup truck. Yeah, yeah, true. Yep. All, all people care about is getting that money at the end. That's of the day, it. Right? That's it. Payday. Well, I like a plaque. Uh, oh yeah, the yeah. gear. <laughs> Gotta have the gear. The most, the most unusual tournament scene I've seen is the one Eric used to fish out of Potomac there on those Wednesday nighters in that at that ramp. When yeah. they no lights, it's like dark. Mosquitoes are biting you. Great. <laughs> JP, what is the ABA schedule up north? You got uh, Ticonderoga's the opener, and then oh. o- Oneida. Cayuga, Thousand Islands, and then Champlain again. Oh, wow. And they start, what, June 18th or something? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, it's the second week of the opening, so it'll be the 16th. Yeah. The 23rd Very. or something like that. Yeah, okay. Very, you haven't seen these yet. Wow. They've got the, right now, that's the, that? best, the best solo man tournament trail. It really is. They get the 60 boats, they pay you the five grand. Yeah. That's the new Monster Bass stuff. Oh, no, the that. swim baits. The dead. Yeah, I show you the but, picture. Wait, 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 wait. There's, show them, show them, show them. You have a draw, right? There's partners, right? We have a draw, but if they don't get enough co anglers, they, they just let, let you go by yourself. Boat. Yeah, yeah. Look at how sick that boat. looks, dude. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's a nice that deal, hurt? bro. Oh, my gosh. I know. Gizzard wizard right there. You know, and, and no offense to Austin when he sent me these, but his shad pattern, like, Oh, there, I there. would throw this all day long over the shad pattern that this bait oh, had yeah. before. Yeah. And oh, I would no feel doubt. much better about it. No doubt, man. Whether I catch a fish or not. That's what I, I, was, I, could, I was chucking the big baits for four days with Scooter, man. Knocked on it, the door. With let me nine. show you. Let me show you this sick joke. TK ruins a perfect, <laughs> a perfect uh triple tail. Triple, triple tail. Trout. I didn't ask for this, so I don't know. Bubblegum. <laughs> for the smallies, man. But the big one turned out sick, dude. Dude, that's mm. awesome. They're going to love it. This is funny. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Come on. Dude, that bubblegum one's going to get him, man. It might. Go for the smallies, man. Your little rat home. Hey, Travis, you know there's smallmouth bass in, in, in the Osborne section of the James River, right? Yeah. Is it enough to do any good? No. Never? Small They're pretty small. small. Not with Florida strain bass and the chick. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. Tackle craft goes, that was by design. I mean, somebody's going to bring in an eight or maybe even a Oh, 10. sure. One day. Oh, yeah. Maybe multiple. Five fish, all alive, 22 pounds. John Pelletier. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Travis, what do you think it'll take over three days to win? Or do you not know yet? So a lot of times I like to do the math before a tournament and really dig into it. But um, I'm going into this event carefree worry-free and my plan is to fish the hardest i can and so whatever happens happens that's how i'm gonna look at this event um i'll know by 
the third day of practice kind of where things are going to be, I think. Are you going to spend any time on the James? Yes, we will be, Eric. You and I will be. Mm -hmm. 52 pounds. It's a good way. For three days? 52 <clears throat> pounds. And I think that's going to be heavy. I eight, think seven, six, eight, 16 eight, a day, eight, 16, eight, 16, eight, 16 eight, a day will get you in top 10. Yeah, 18 a day will win it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? What's that come out to? 54. Yeah, that's probably about right. Every time I've been down there, 45 pounds wins it, but I guess they are still <laughs> in the spawning phase. So Yeah. There should be some chubbies caught. Eric, you fished a, 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 a boater format there for some yeah. reason, right? You were forced into it. No, no, I, I just, I, we fished as a team and, uh, Brian, Brian had to work the tournament. So I became the boater in the national championship. Yep. Semi-national final. You put some stuff together. I did. Yep. And then my engine blew up, but I right. still came in 16th. I think I was That's ninth crazy, after day one. Dude. Wow. I fished trolling motor all day the second day. Out of Osborne? <laughs> no. Out of uh, Chickahominy uh, Waterfront State Park, right there in Gordon's Creek. Yep. Huh. Couldn't go far, not with that current. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Still got my limit. Lost a couple good ones. I had a 5 4 buzz bait, man. 5 4 choked a buzz bait, missed a 4 4 in a buzz bait, and the, my co angler threw behind me after it blew up, and I was picking up my jig rod. To a crankbait and caught it. <laughs> Wait a the second. The only fish he caught all day. Huh? Hold up. When you had, when you missed the fish on a buzz bait. Yeah, I went to follow up. Was it in front of you or behind you? Oh, where it was, was your in cast front of and where was, in a big way. Hold on. It was yeah. in front of you. Yeah, tide's coming out of a little creek gut. And so he casted his bait while you were getting another bait in front. Ah, uh, big time. And I and turned you did, around. What'd you say to him? I, he, he said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just needed that one fish to get to the national finals. And I looked at him and I, I think I pointed at him. I said, you know, that was wrong. I said, don't you fucking do that again all day. And he sat there quiet for the rest of the day. I don't get mad. Yeah. I'm fired up, dude. Um, and I went around the corner and caught a five, four and, I, uh, I, I want, yeah, I, real quick. I want to share something that happened recently to me. I'm not going to name names. None of this. Okay. Yeah. I had a fish on a bed and I pitched to it and it was mid, it was right by the driver. So I saw it. I put the poles down and the boat stopped. It was about eight feet dead center off of the driver's council. Okay. I pitched to the bed and co-angler pitches <laughs> right where I pitched. Oh my God. And I look at him. I go, bro. What are you doing? I go, nah, -uh. this ain't how this is going down. And I got vocal about it. I'm like, uh, uh, that's not how this goes. You don't pitch on the same bed I'm pitching to. For one, that's retarded because I mean, first of all, you want to, uh, uh, I don't care if it's a, even a team tournament. I don't want Eric pitching on that bed right after I pitch a bait to it. You know no. what I mean? You, you got to work that bait properly to get that fish to bite. You must enjoy the fish with. No, I'll chuck the big swim bait on the bed and fire the fish up for you. Right, JP? Dude, I've never had to say nothing to nobody until – I mean, that was wrong, dude. Are you telling me that's fine to do? No. That's crazy. Jimmy, yeah. you said me, something really me, – Me and my partners fish on the front of the deck together. Yeah. I, so you don't yeah. want me in your boat because I'll be up your ass, dude. <laughs> you don't get it, bro. Eric, Eric, dude, Eric, do I say come up to the front all the time? All the time, but I stay in the back because I like the angles yeah. better. Yeah, I say the same thing to Eric. I, go, come, oh, I like the angle. I get better angles back here. I I'll catch the in the back. Man. Up your I'll put my boat. Where you... <laughs> I'll stand on your 12 inch graph to bed fish against you. <laughs> <laughs> JP, I'm telling you, I'll be right up in there. <laughs> He'll be whistling zippity doo dah out his asshole, and I'll hear it. I'm telling you. Mm, I think a team, a team tournament's a little different than a co-angler flipping to the bed, though. Very true. That happened to me on the Potomac, man. That sucks. 
That's what, crazy. What, what day two, day three. What happened? So I'm I'm fishing these four pilings. I'm waiting for the tide to come down. And there's these four big pilings on the Potomac. And I'm waiting to run up north because the tide was third day. The tide was crazy, right? I lost my water. So I flip in. I lift up. The fish is going left. I set the hook. He pulls the bait. I lose the bait, right? I go into my bag. I'm putting the bait on. And I hear behind me. The co-angler throws a four-ounce shaky head <laughs> in a foot of water and catches a four and a half off the same pole. Above your, in front of you. Yes. Damn. Yeah. I let the boat drift away because I didn't want him to even know I had a bite, you know? And he seen me. And, and that fish right there would have, uh, whatever. It is what it is, man. Do these dudes get something? Listen, as a boater, I understand the optimism, enthusiasm, the the wanting to be drawn with the guy that's going to get them to the freaking winning circle, right? That's what goes on in a lot of these co-anglers' heads, right? They're just fingers crossed that they draw the dude that's on the mother load. And so they get it in their head. I We got to win. I got to do this. I got whatever. And, and so a lot of times – common sense goes out the window and it does for pros too. In certain situations, I've told you stories when I pulled up on, when I've raced into a guy that was clearly in the right and I cut the dude off and I admit it in front of him. Cause he's like this to me. And I'm like, yeah, I messed up, bro. Do what you got to do here. You know what I mean? So we've all been there in the heat of the moment. And so I can see that happening. You know, when you lose a big fish like that up front, you know, maybe hey, Travis, maybe you'd no, sneak one, a little cast up there, dude. You know, one thing, one thing. They I haven't been catching shit all day. He's just thinking, I never, oh, try. Go angler at disadvantage ever, never. So right. I was on. Huh? I was. I was on Lake George fishing a tournament, it was a New York Fed tournament, and uh, I had a couple fish right. And the co-angler was like, "Oh, I got this crib down in the south end that's got fish on it," you know. So I'm like, "All right, yeah, we'll go down and check it out," you know. So I could drive down to this, these two cribs. There's two of them, right? So you could tell which one had the fish on it. The one had big boulders coming out of the top of it and everything. Mm. So I'm bringing the boat up. I throw a little uh, flea flicker up there. And uh, he goes, no, don't cash to that one, right? And I see the dorsal fin of the bass come out, eats oh the bait, my right? God. I catch a four and a half pounder. He, he reluctantly netted it. And he goes, well, I didn't tell you that it had fish on it so you could catch the fish. And I go, well, you are in my boat, but I don't really know what to tell you. <laughs> I guess I felt bad about it after, though. <laughs> Dang. I guess I did feel a little bad about it after. The 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 biggest, I guess the biggest thing that always sticks in my mind with the co angler issue or or just a situation I had was was on Oneida Lake once, and we both saw the bass flicker at the same time, right? And it was pretty much dead center of the boat out this way. And I was throwing something different, but he had his pop art in his hand. And as I grabbed the pop art to throw at this fish that just busted, I saw his bait land near it. And of course, bloop, bloop. And there's a five pound largemouth, little bonus largemouth there. And there's, it wasn't anyone's fault. I'm like, damn. But you know, stuff like that happens. It's when, it's when those things like Jimmy was saying about, casting up on in that i haven't had never had an issue where it affected me to catch that fish or not you know i've never experienced something major like that i've seen All things right. where it could have turned out ugly but you got to give me two minutes i got to tell this story okay so we're fishing the costa travis you were in it on champlain okay. JP, you're gonna love this so of course i run up north and I'm up on the New York side, up under up under the trestle, you know, uh, on the left-hand side there where all those little cones are, you know, where there's big smallies, right? So I was up there, and I caught him in practice like four and a half, some fives on, on, a, uh, on a Sammy, dude, like they were eating it. But I had to have it where it was low light, right, first thing in the morning. So I draw my partner. We haul ass up there. By the time I get there, it's 730, and the sun's bright, right? So I'm, I'm working this – Sammy, I'm busting my balls trying to get a bite. So my non-boater picks up a swim bait, right? He whips it out. He sets the rod on the back deck. He starts taking off all his clothes. 
I look back and I see the fish jumping with his swim bait in his mouth, right? He picks up the rod. Oh, I got him. And this guy was about 80 years old, dude. I got him. I got him. I, I said, fuck, right? I net this five and a half pounds molly, right? Put him in the live well for him. So we're fishing. And I, I couldn't get a fish. I go to my next spot. And I had it. It was a real tiny spot, a little rock pile in New York. So I dropped a buoy on it, right? Like 10 feet off of it. I turn around. I make one cast with a drop shot. I hook a five pounder. He jumps off at the boat. I lose him. All of a sudden, I hear, Zzz. I look over, and the guy's got a jig on, and he's like, and I hear my buoy going, duk, 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 duk. Duk, 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 duk. he's got my marker buoy on with his jig, right? <laughs> Next thing you know, he goes like this. I got him. Dude, I met the fish with my marker buoy, his jig, and a five-pound smaller, dude, I swear to God. <laughs> All three of them were in the fucking net, right? Wait, it, 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 wait, wait, hold on now. So we go to my next spot, right? A little causeway. I'm fishing and I'm catching two pounders, right? I can't get a big bite. He says, I think I'm going to eat some lunch, right? So I, I, had, I had, the seat, had the seat back there for him, right? With a little, you know, a little rest seat. So he sets his sandwich on the seat. He throws his drop shot out the back of the boat, right? And he's eating his sandwich and he's doing this and he's eating his sandwich, doing this. Next thing I know, I see the rod hit, hits the gun on the boat. Boom! He's like, oh, shit, I got another one. I swear to God, this guy weighed in 21 pounds out of the back of my boat. Unbelievable. 21 pounds. And What'd he, you come in with? He, he said, Jim, here's 100 bucks because you got me to day three. I said, what the fuck? I was like, what? What does that even mean, dude? Here's 100 bucks. I'm not a guy. <laughs> Dude, it was it was the craziest thing, craziest thing. So What'd you weigh in? Sometimes it's your day, sometimes it's not. What'd you weigh in, Jimmy? Twelve pounds both days. Unbelievable. <laughs> Horrible. Horrible. I mean, that's like Travis guide and tell tell the story about the guy with the worm with the swivel on the upper bay. So, last year I had a trip. Well, it happened more than once, but he <laughs> yeah. had he insisted on using his own rods which were like smaller rods that I wouldn't use like trout size rods. And he had a pretty big leader swivel, whatever you want to call it. One rod had a leader, steel leader, and one had a swivel steel so, leader. Yes. But one of the rods had, uh, I was catching, I was trying to catch some perch while I was getting these guys on some bass. So I threw a little 2.8 Kai tech out there and I accidentally ripped into a big, large mouth. And now this guy's interested in what I was using. I'm like, well, you know, really, I'm only throwing this to catch dinner. You know what I mean? Like, I, I lucked out and caught a largemouth. <laughs> but I'll give you one. So I set it up. And he, now I want to put on my rod. So he took his swivel off and then tied the jig onto the swivel, the Kitek, threw it out there. And now he's sitting down on the passenger seat literally five feet away from the boat, right where the power poles were. And donk, it's like a five pounder. And I'm like, what? And then later on the day, I got him set up with a uh, seven inch power worm doing the same thing, just dragging it right where I was grinding the poles in mud. Like, so it goes to show like you can accidentally catch fish pretty like, like those were two studs he caught that day. Isn't that crazy? I mean, there's grass on the hook, probably. <laughs> Every other cast, he wouldn't take the grass off. He would just chuck it back out there. Ain't you know? the whole thing. And that's another thing, guys. And and I'm not. I don't. I'm not. I don't pick on the people I guide because I teach them. Okay, sure. I correct them. But the biggest thing I see is guys don't pay attention to their hooks when they bring their baits back to the boat. Like they don't even know there's a little bit of black moss on the bottom of that hook, right? Or at the top you know, where the top line tie is to me, you got to take that off. I mean, let's start fresh every time. Sure. And so that's the biggest, the two factors I see, cause I see it every day and I correct them and they, they, they tell me, make sure you tell me if you see me doing something wrong. And so I point these things out. Number one, you're working the bait way too fast. Number two, there's, you know, there's a lot of 
grass that you need to get off your bait before you make it second cast to, you know what I mean? Um, and then by the end of the day, when they start swimming their sinkos back in, it's time to call it a day. You know, I tried. You know, <laughs> what, what are we supposed to do here? I don't know. Give him a swimming sinko. What the heck? <laughs> Travis, did you hear about fruit. the Montana state record that was caught either last weekend or the weekend before? Uh-uh. So I think they said the kid was about nine or ten, and he had a live worm on a hook, and he was watching – TikTok on his phone and reeled in a nine and a half pounder. Broke the state record wow. by about a pound. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's oh fishing man. Right there. Hey, Sean's got a good question. When when I'm working the Ned or drop shot, do you work the rod or just tap the rod? So do I have a correctional officer horror story? A what? Oh, a co-angler horror story. Yeah, the guy that stole my baits, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I took my baits. We'll get to that. What are you that. talking about? I know. Listen. Thief. Don't steal your boater's baits. I like to I, – I, I find myself lately shaking that bait back because I'm shaking it over the cover to try to feel when it's going to get hung up or, or prior to getting hung up. That's been my style this year. You know what I mean, Eric? Yeah. That swim and shake, pull. Uh, yeah, that's that's a, one of the top five Ned retrieves. Is it? Oh, yeah, steady – Steady shake and swim while maintaining okay. very light bottom contact. In this yeah. Case, yeah. Yeah. It's got to be on the, the bottom. The it's five. almost my favorite. That's that's yep. kind of like my consistent um, handicap way, if you would. Yep. Like th that's what I, I, I catch myself doing that a lot, dude. Yep. I fish a shaky head like that. Same thing. You ever purposely get your bait stuck in the mill foil yeah. and then just let it mm -hmm. dead stick in the mill foil? I not so much there i know with a grant well yeah. you're missing you're missing out you're missing yep. out because when there's current and your bait's just sitting in the mill foil doing its little thing and they suck it right off of there and it's always a good one it works on largies too, eric man. how about mine in the bay list two weeks ago on the rock pile oh yeah snapping it off the rock pile. Boom! oh yeah twice yeah. twice yeah, you're right jp that works man oh yeah boom Fish sucked it right in twice. Twice. Mm. They weren't Daniel's little got a, Daniel's got a good question. Travis, is it harder to guide a complete rookie or guys who can catch them? Is there any pressure to teach a guy who can catch them something they don't know? Um, man, that's a good question. So for me, it's uh, I have to depending on the day. You know, I said I, I prefer to fish open water and grass. But if the dudes can can cast accurately, uh, we have more options throughout the day to do. And so the only pressure I have, I, I love being able to teach someone. And if they're willing to listen and then try, I'm all about it. Y you know, like yesterday or a couple days ago was really cool, Eric. I, I set up on an area. And it had to be like the perfect cast. And he just wasn't getting it where he needed to be. Right. And he, but he was very open to learning, like very coachable. Okay. And so I said, listen, just let me show you something. I took the rod from him and I couple, actually the last couple guys, actually, as far as being able to pitch a bait properly, um, just practicing, man, they were so ready to learn. And you could tell it would be like me, someone teaching me how to golf. Like I want to hit it so bad that I'm ready sure. to learn, but I can't do yeah. it. It was the yep. same way with this guy. I was like, man, you're trying, dude. I know you're almost there, but today's not, you know, you're by the end of the day, you're still not going to get it. It's one of those things. Right. where, you, And he knew that he's like, I got to practice this. Yeah. But anyway, so this was a different guy, but we, I took the bait and I skipped it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and I handed him the rod, and sure enough, dude, the four pounder bit. That's awesome. And and then I went into my whole rant, like when you see me turning, bro, this is what I do. I'm <laughs> up against this. This is where I'm at. You know what I mean? That's awesome. I'm like, this is where I'm at, That's and then awesome. I get fired up because sure. I know how hard the Chesapeake can be, man. Oh my God, Tar, you gotta be, you gotta be on it. Gotta be. Not easy. Unless and then the I I do tell him the sob story where listen, bro, he I'm I got four Neds tied up on the tournament day because I'm breaking off too, just like you. Like sure. I ain't one hundred percent perfect at all. And I'm gonna take those shots and I'm gonna get stuck plenty of times. You're not the only one. Yep. You know, and that's the biggest thing is you you want to get people 
to kind of see their mistakes, but understand that there's a learning curve that goes with it and then try well, to overcome that. You know, hundred percent, man. I mean, yeah. you know, if, if they're under what we're talking about for skipping, it, it takes a certain skill level to, to get the bait there. Mm-hmm. No doubt. You know, it does big time. <laughs> Sean goes, you mean your normal spinning cast, or your two handed cast. Good point. <laughs> Good point. Well, listen, fellas, I got to get these contacts out. All right, Jimmy. Yeah, we're going to wrap this up pretty soon. JP, nice to meet you, bud. Nice meeting you, bud. Hopefully I'll see you uh, if I come up that way. That'd be awesome, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, we're going to do it. All Alex, right, Jimmy, everybody. Eric, see, you time. see you guys. Take care, I'll, t- I'll call you tomorrow, Jimmy. You got it, man. See ya. See ya. Peace, brother. Man. Where do we go from here? We get do we gotta wrap it up. We got we got we got work to do in the morning. You fish tomorrow, Eric? No, nah, man. More uh more more getting the house ready, man. I got more JP, you working tomorrow? I'm working. Yeah, Alex, what are you doing tomorrow? I have three or four finals I gotta get done tomorrow. Oh, I wanna get everything man. done by Thursday so I can go fishing, but we'll see. <laughs> hey, how'd you do in your tournament? It was okay. I don't know the exact place we finished. They just read off the top nine. We had eleven something and thirteen even was the last check they gave out. So did you I catch talk- it? Did you see any cruisers like you were talking about? I I did Friday during practice, but Friday night going to Saturday there was a cold front that messed things up a lot more than I thought it would, and it was blow on about 20 that day which made the site fishing oh, wow. a lot harder too so oh, yeah. I, they might have been cruising i just couldn't see them so sure cut a couple on the backup pattern just we had two one and a half pounders we couldn't get rid of that if we would have we would have been in the money but we executed well and the game plan worked we just didn't get the right bite so yeah it's gonna grow on to the next one i guess mm, good deal man All right, so we are going to uh, we're going to have our next live next week Monday uh, from the James River, and we might do um, if if we have good internet at our house, we're going to try to go live a, a few times during the evening, so uh, or during that week. So look for those notifications if we are able to set it up. We're certainly going to do that because I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, I'm not going to. We're just going to have fun, JP. We're gonna just we're gonna try to enjoy like I'm going looking forward down. to you guys. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna oh, be intense, it's going but it's gonna be fun. Um we gotta do, do the friend we gotta do the we gotta do the friendly four man side bet. So if we all no. suck, at least somebody gets something. No, I ain't doing none of oh, that. Yeah. I don't do that. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like those little bets. When I have guy trips with Why two not? people, they make those bets. I oh, I know. love them bets. You get to the ramp in the morning, pay your hundred dollar entry fee, then you go over to the the group of guys that you know is going to do pretty good, and go, all right, let's put another hundred between us. You know? Ooh. Mm. I don't know, <laughs> Eric. We never bet, really. No, I'm not into it. Uh. Uh-uh. No, we man. Might have bet. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I like the team thing when I'm working with somebody, not against them. Yeah, that's my jam right now. He is. He's a team player, man. I used to want to whip everybody's ass. I'm over it. Now I just want to whip the other team's ass. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 I ran the boat. Scooter let me run the boat for a couple of days. It was fun. You mean drive or just control or what? No, just on the trolling motor, man. When I caught my 882, I was running the trolling motor, the six and chain. Yep. It's fun. Any it's more issues good. with the ghost, Travis? Man, that I, I oh. ran it. That thing is awesome. You have the ghost? You, he has a ghost too now? Yeah, man. I love it. Really? It's awesome, isn't it, Eric? Oh, my God. So, oh. so the only thing, and I haven't been able to really test it out, I think my spot lock still pushes me off a little further than I'd like, okay. JP. So if Fair. you guys know how to... And it's I'm sure cal- I can calibrate it. You got to calibrate it. I th- I did that already though. The first day I had it out, you know, but oh, it was okay. under windy conditions. So maybe it's not yeah. correct. I need it to be right. Yeah. Cause so far, man, so good. But if you go on those forums, you see Don't all the, go on the forums. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Brendan Andrews, we threw the eight and six inch mag rat. What you call you a couple personal best, didn't you? Uh, I, you know, I've had fish over eight. I don't, I don't know if the 
I still want to calibrate. It was a brand new scale and it was a cheap Rapala scale. So it had the frame of a 10. I want to calibrate it to see exactly what it weighed, you know, uh, but it came in at 882. So um, that's probably one of my biggest fish, my top five. And what yeah. was that on? Magraft. Yeah, like we that's swim baits. I mean, we threw swim baits. Yeah. I bed fished a little, little bit. Um, it's pretty amazing what one of those glides will do to piss off a fish and prime them up for a, a very small, tiny brush hog. They ate it every time I pitched in and after the swim bait was in there three or four times. So similar to what Austin was doing with those bedding fish. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't trying to catch them on the big bait. I don't want to have you, to try. You're to trying them. to piss them off. Yeah. Just fire them up. They'll blow on it. They'll knock it. They'll bite it. Yeah. I just want to fire them up and then pitch my speed craw in or my little drop shot in. And, and literally, you'd, you'd see, I'd start out just with the regular bedding bait just to see, you know, if the fish was doing circles or staying close, leave, come back pretty quick. So you knew it was a catchable fish. But I got to tell you, it accelerated the process. As soon as that big bait went, I was throwing the Gancraft in on them. That Gancraft will just sink straight down and stand straight up and down on its hooks. It won't lay on its side. It's perfectly balanced. And it's incredible. Like the female and the male came into the bed to, to, to like, what is that? The mm. reaction was instant, instant. They really did not like that in their bed. Pretty crazy. Uh, Super Canuck goes, how do you find uh, the Mega 360 and Live Scope together? I feel like it might be too distracting and take away from just fishing. Um, I love my setup. I haven't had, so, so guiding most of the time I'm in the back of the boat. And so I, I don't have a pulse on that live scope as, as well as I'd like to. If it was just me in a tournament in some of these areas I'm fishing, I would definitely focus on the live scope 360. But as a guide, it's a little bit more difficult to be able to, uh, as Eric pops off real quick, technical difficulties. It's, it's a little tougher to manage everything that way. But it definitely has it, – it will – the benefits will outweigh distraction or whatever you think may happen uh, with that setup. I'm really pleased with that. Uh, JP, what do you do? You have the 360? No, just uh, so your you dad know, does. The scope. So you well, might. As we're well still waiting. We're still waiting for it. You might as well get that off of his uh, boat, dude. <laughs> dude, I'm in love with it. I What's have that, Travis the the 360 that oh, yeah. Mega 360. Um, Pretty and then the live scope as well, you know, um, I think when I'm solo and really concentrating and, and working offshore, that's really going to come into play. What if you could only have one? Good question. If you're a shallow angler, uh, 360, if you're deep live scope, if you could only have one, like if you're a Chesapeake Bay guy, probably 360. If you're eight feet or less, most of the time, 360. But if you can oh, get away JP. with both, definitely. JP, you're welcome, man. That's awesome, dude. What happened? JP Harrell? Yeah, he caught a, a key fish on one of the JDM baits I recommended. Mm. And Heck yeah. Heck yeah, man. That bait, JP, keep it tied on during the post-spawn. I had my... Uh, Stand that bait. I have the uh, Epic Eric Shaky jigs ready to go. Nice. Oh, boy. Just in case. I like it. I can't wait to see what uh, what area you're selecting for the off-the-wall Friday practice. I had some well, thoughts on the same thing. It involves two launches that day. Oh, that's fine. That's yeah. even better. Mm -hmm. And uh, since I'm with you, I might go do a little sneaky thing with you. Cool. You're up for a real adventure. Like a legit, yeah. but I'm just not sure how. Yeah. Yeah, you're, yeah you'd yeah, you be the guy for that. You know okay. what? I might scratch my. Well, I have my plan laid out right here on my tide charts. So I mean, if you feel like talking about it tomorrow, if you got time, sure. Yeah, I will. I will. Or Wednesday, whatever, you know, just so I can rig mm -hmm. up right. And I'll that's when, 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 when JP and myself and Tom Nee and, and, uh, and Gary all talk, 
we kind of like, are we going to have like assignments, you know, like where are we going to fish this day and that? And I said, really, for the first couple of days, guys, you got to go with what your gut tells you and what your research told you and areas you want to go check out yourself. I'm like, let's not hold anyone to nothing. Let's just go out and do our thing and get that out of our system. And then as the days get tighter, we can really be like, man, I'm struggling here, guys. What do we got going on? You know what I mean? Or this is working or shit nothing's working or holy shit it's a circus out there i know there's gonna be this many boats out here you know we're gonna have all these different conversations and then hopefully try to get some sort of game plan as we get closer it's gonna be one of those tournaments where it's gonna be unknown jp what's gonna happen because a i don't think we're gonna be hooking too many fish so we're not quite sure on the size um i really want to make that a uh in most tournaments, I'm fortunate enough to fish. I'm a, I'm able to hook some fish and have some fun during practice. But I don't think this is going to be one of them events where you can do that. As much as we want to set the hook. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... Yes. You know, like you, you were talking about bending your hooks over and stuff. I've never had to really do that. Yeah. You know, there was a tournament there. I had a guy trip the other day before this tournament that was canceled. And the guy was like, man, feel free to fish. Show me what's up. Show me how you work your baits and all that. And there was a, that point where I was like, I, I remembered that, that fish bit. And I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. Do I set and in my mind? I did. I asked him because I don't know why, but in my mind, I'm like, I'm not setting up. I'm going to come here for in that tournament Saturday. And dude's like, no, dude, set the hook. I'm like, fine. But I never even set the hook. Yet he still was hooked in the top of his mouth, you know? So. <laughs> How many fry gardeners do you think there's going to be? 40, 50%. Fry gardeners are normally males, though. Yeah. But a 15 pound sack of males goes a long way. So, yeah, yep. Uh, Super Canuck, can someone explain to me side imaging on the trolling motor versus 360? So, 360 is going to give you a more full view, and it doesn't matter if you're moving or not, where your side image transducer will just be out to the sides, depending on the way your trolling motor is pointed. And it really helps if you're moving the boat. So, I've used side image at the trolling motor you know years ago and it, it as you're going straight down you definitely can pick things up to cast to but uh that's the main difference your 360 is just going to be easier visual and you can actually set it up where it just scans like not behind the boat so you're just constantly seeing what's in front of you and i found that setting three or four on the speed is ideal for what i'm doing when it works, I don't know if you guys let me know in the comments. I my 360s kind of some days I'll notice it's kind of bogged down where it's not rotating as freely as I'd like it to be at times, which kind of concerns me. Does that happen, Eric? Have you seen that on the mega? Yeah, don't sound like it. No. Okay, I haven't spent much time. We ran with no electronics this weekend. We had the main navigation. That was it. Zero on the front. Took them off. Mm -hmm. now, I've been fishing. Like I said, I've been turning my 360 or, uh, yeah, I've been, I, my 360 is on pretty much at the front and then maybe have a mapping at the council out on the Chesapeake. And then when, when we get in some areas where I can use the, the live scope a little bit, I, I turn it on here and there. Yeah. Um, forward facing, obviously not down, but sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guys, I have not sold any of my Dobbins yet. I got a whole stack of them ready to go one of these days. I'm still waiting on getting the rest of my shipment. I got a shipment from St. Croix coming in tomorrow, so I'm excited to see what what rods awesome. I should should be getting. But, man, I'm uh, so far, I, I made a couple of videos up at Will's, one about the, uh, the new uh, Victory jerkbait rod. Eric, I really – I know you're a Dobbins fan – or I'm uh, – g loomis fan yeah but when we play around this this next year i want you to try some of these 
technique specific rods. Like they have a spy bait rod, they have a, a spinning rod for jerk baits. And um, I'd love to. It, it's fun. we'll you try them up there. New tackle, man. I'd love sure. to try some out. I've never really thrown them. The St. Croix, the victories. Um, yeah, I'm that's sorry. What I that's what will, I meant. Yeah. So Will had – so we, we caught a bunch of fish on, on a really cool crankbait that we're going to have a video about coming up. And Will's like – he wanted to try the crankbait, and he threw it on that victory rod. And he was – even Will was like, damn, I got to get me some of these. Nice. So he's like, man, you got a discount on these, Travis? You know what I mean? He's hitting me up with all this stuff. And um, – yeah, Bo Judd goes the 360 bogs down when the transducer on the trolling motor is not picking up the bottom regularly. So I see that. We'll get it all dialed in. Guys, we're going to be uh, – JP, we got that spare trolling motor coming maybe. Uh, he said he might be getting some 52-inch uh, 52, 52 models. Yeah, he said he might be getting that 52-inch model in one day, one day this week. So Okay. Hey Eric, okay. I won a couple of G Loomis rods in term a couple weeks ago. Uh, what, what would, would be a couple um, of good ones I to like, pick out? I like the NRXs and and uh, uh, some of the GLXs. NRX in particular. Yep, I love their spinning rods, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a couple of conquests that I got to fish with Travis from a drop shot perspective, which I just thought were awesome, man. Yep. Did and you get your spirit sheds, JP, yet? Oh, no, what the hell, Will? Where's my baits? Yeah, Will. <laughs> He's going to get you. Eric, were you with us last weekend? Yeah, you were. When I freaked out yeah. with my... Yeah, okay. You were there. You and Scooter. <laughs> we went live yeah. last week. You never responded. I went, like, live Friday night. You went live Friday? I'm um, dude. It was there was a oh, surprise was birthday party at Scooter's sister in law's house. That crazy. was the latest I was up in probably ten years. <laughs> that was a good time. Wow, <laughs> that's awesome. Oh man, well, cool guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. We we have we have. I appreciate it. Eric. Thanks for oh, coming. Oh. We did, I didn't know you're going to show up, dude, tonight. No, I told Alex I'd be after after nine. By the way, did you get my gift care package yet? I haven't been home, dude, in four weeks. You haven't been home that long. I swear. Don't you miss your cat? <laughs> we had him. We had him here at the beach with us. You did? What did yeah. you do? Take him like a crate or something? No. Yeah, in the car, crate him in the car, and then let him hang out in the house. He doesn't get car Take sick. For Cats life, get car sick, dude. The They'll puke all over the place. We... No, we're good. They're good, man. They're unbelievable. It's good, man. It's good. Wow. Eric, postpone yeah. bass chatterbait, crawl imitation or shad imitation on the back? Ah, uh, man, I still think, well, probably shad. I, I, I'm probably more bluegillish right now. Yeah. You know, me the swim Zach, the, 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 the Zacco. Think, put the Zacco or a grub on yeah. the back, dude. I, I put the Zacco right now. If you're looking for a bigger bite, Zacco for sure. I, right fished, now. I fished with uh, uh, J. Todd Tucker for a day. He came up and he's like, uh, Oh, I got a tournament. You know, you want to take me out for a day? So I say, I'll take you out or whatever, you know. So I'm smashing him on a, on a chatterbait. And uh, all day, he's like, I don't know why you got that swim bait on the back. You got to put a crawl imitation on it. It's a shad spawn, you know, and it makes it look like there's more shad on it. I go, well, I don't know because you haven't caught a bass yet. But then he did end up catching one, six pounds. He caught a six-pounder. Oh, wow. Hmm. So, Kyle, yeah. talk to me about the Z-Man Razor Shad. Hard bait to get snugged up on that chatter bait, but very but similar to this. There, it's good. Yeah. Super glue, bro. Man, I know. A drop. Well, it's glue. just hey, we asked, it's just get, it. getting that, that on there too. perfect. Right. You could do it. I don't think it's that hard. Plus, you got oh, Eric, guess box. what? Guess what chatter bait I have tied on going into the James. Your little. Uh, Red, the one you tied up for me on those. Uh, no way. The, yeah, dude, I got it ready. And I put I put the goat, the hot craw color on the back as a trail. Oh, man, I'm that is a wild ass color. Isn't thinking it? outside the box, dude. Yep. Because Tom Nee's got something in my head. He keeps telling me. When's your next full moon? Oh, it's got to be three weeks away. The full moon was last week. Yeah, we had the super Yeah, it was moon. Saturday. It was a super moon. So they all went Did to not, the hill, man. They 
It didn't seem like that on the Chesapeake, man, unless I'm doing it wrong. What was your what was your water temp? Main River, uh last couple days, barely sixty. Maybe that's why they didn't go hard. But back areas, sixty four, sixty five. Oh, they probably were. They I'm probably a firm were believer off. that that main river needs to heat up. I you agree. can go in the back creek and be 70 degrees, and the main river's 58, and it's not going to happen. I agree. I agree. They're, those grass flat fish will go late, man. They'll be spawning in May. Oh, sure. In June. In June. Yeah, yeah, tidal fish go late sometimes, man. Especially if the water floods on those rivers, man. You'll find you'll find fish on tidal systems spawning in main river stuff in June. July. My dad, my dad and I fished a, a tournament a few years back in July, and I did catch a solid fish on a the bed. There you go. Second week in July, dude. Yep. Blew my mind on the Chesapeake, and I. It's crazy to think though that if you really look at it, like the spawn from Florida all the way up to New York, like almost August, there's been yes, bedding November fish. November to August, you can go find <laughs> spawn fish somewhere in the country. True. Isn't that crazy? That's true. Yeah. I mean, because it can start in Florida in November. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's awesome. You can fish the spawn all the way through uh, August if you just well. want to age your way the coast. <laughs> Are you right? Yes. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm. All right, I'm, I'm out. I'm going to bed. All right, man. Good to meet you guys. All right, guys. We're, nice all gonna, meet you. we're all going to head. Good to meet you Friday, man, in person. That'll be fun. All right, cool, cool. All right. Will goes Gajo auction prices will be going out this week. See, that's the difference. When I put out an auction, that shit ships the next day. When I get Pirate these shit. when I get these random peeps up here trying to, you know, exploit the channel, take advantage of the viewers. <laughs> fuck it. Two weeks out, three weeks. Well, we'll get to them. No, Will had some good deals, guys. We unfortunately our computer crashed. We did do quite a few awesome baits that uh for a very good price. So the guys oh that did take God. advantage of those eight or nine or 10, I think once we get back up there, I, I will definitely want to do it again. Cause will does have a lot of piles of, of uh Gajo sitting up there and some are, like he said, some off colors that, you know, he just can't put in the packs. They just didn't turn out perfect, but those are the shit he sends me and I catch fish on them. They right? still catch them, they man. Work. I got a couple of those packs, dude. <laughs> mm -hmm. They work. We'll get them out. I Thank can't you, wait man. till it gets those those tubes going, man. You know that's right. Man, you gotta you're gonna love it. We're going up there in a couple weeks if you're I know, still in. A couple in. weeks we'll be up there in New York, man. That'll be fun. Dude. It's yeah. I tried making a bunch of videos by our famous bridge, but I couldn't man. really get them going there, dude. Dang. I, I'll catch a few. I, I caught them on a pivot head. Uh that's pretty fun. good. So I did make a good pivot head video. I caught them on rabid baits. Uh, that little Ned with the little hair. That's fun. Call him on a unique crankbait. Uh, Will and I did a jerkbait video. Nice. And then uh, we just had some fun on his tubes for sure. So that's good. I content. think you'll uh, I think you'll be pleased uh, when you get up there. I, I, I it's going to be perfect. We're going to be hitting at the right time. I'm looking forward to it, man. It's Looking still cold up there, dude. It's still cold up there. So I know, you know, man. What I mean. I know. Like it's my, it's gonna my, be I've on. My, I've got you don't need down. that. Yeah, you're oh, I do. fine. You know me on the bay, man. I'm like looking like an alien in June. I know you do. I know you. Do. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Craziness. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with us, and as always, until next time, we'll see you on the water. Bye, guys. Peace.